Hello, this is Zombie Paper. In this one, I'm going to be checking the settings first to make sure that things are working well. What I do, um, let's see. Okay, so I check in in Twitch, there's the stream manager. And I just check to see how that looks for settings. Um, so I have to pause that video. I have to pause the video on my channel. So that way it doesn't eat up too much of my bandwidth. Uh, I have both of those tabs silenced. And probably not going to really advertise this out too much. So if people, uh, people hear about it, then cool. If not, then... Uh, Cool. So, um, yeah, I think I'll I'll go ahead and get started here. So, okay, here's that. And so, I have a few things I need to update um, with the. I wouldn't really say need to. Uh, just kind of having a having a bad day overall. So, figure doing this is a good way to. Uh, uh, get myself into a good headspace, a good sort of uh, uh, feeling better about about stuff. So um, that's my plan for today. I'm just moving things around so I can see the chat a little better. So I'm not going to be as precise with things, but uh, stuff like this helps a little bit. Helps uh, helps more than uh, um, shoot. Um, it helps. So. Fortunately, when I go too fast like that, it, I end up breaking things, but it uh, looks like I didn't break it too badly, so I'll go through. Um, this is one section I wanted to work on, where I have a new list of people. Um, let's see how that works. Yeah, that's fine there. So we have 27. It's up here. Let's see, so that's good there. Then we have 28. That's here. 29. 30. Oops. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's like I don't really want to dig too much and uh, into what's been going on because it's it's just mainly the, the kind of the stupid shit that I'm always dealing with it seems like but uh, so something like this is nice to to get in, get dig into to to get my mind off of all of that it's like being able to look at this and say okay I can uh, it, it's like a, it is escapism in a sense it is it is me um, dealing with life in my way that helps me uh, figure things out, deal with the situations that I'm in. Um, I wish it were easier. I wish that uh, it would seem more like uh, I could go through and I could get onto the road of better health, but uh, I don't know. It's It's like on the one hand, there's the whole if people aren't acting in malice but then it seems that way it, it definitely seems like um for example it's like uh, um i was uh yeah i've uh i'll i'll dig into this and and when uh, someone stops in i'll change the topic up uh be a little bit more positive about it so um I was told by my old spine uh, doctor that I should go see a, a muscle skeletal doctor, and so then I I asked my my doctor about that today and or yesterday. He said go contact Doctor So and So, and when I did, it was uh, I was told that the waiting list was almost two months out to see a doctor. So uh, I I emailed him today and I said. Uh, um, what do you recommend? Because it's 
you know, two months and my health is not improving at all. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, the most I can do is what I'm doing now, which is just um, keeping on getting people to help. But it just, it's frustrating, right? It's like, you know, you you, you do what you can in life and you say, well, I'm gonna, gonna try as hard as I can, do every single thing that these doctors tell me to do. And instead of getting better, I get worse. And so then it's like, well, what what can I do? And so then I just, uh, you know, I was in a really bad headspace uh, up until, you know, now and then probably in a, a half hour, an hour or so. How I get out of that, how I avoid getting stuck in that negative headspace is I just, in a sense, I just dump all my effort into doing something. Uh, I'm done with that. And by doing something it's like you know okay if 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 all this is just if if i'm just dealing with all this shit where I just like nothing's going right oh this is fine this isn't going too wrong so you know it's like what can i do but just uh just press on ahead so we do this and we'll say mind to scan and let's see how the format looks here um how do I want to say it? Um, uh, we'll just say it directly. We'll say restroom. More restrooms. Because he had said the other day, let's see what he said. Needs more toilets. Yeah, that's fine then. So, yeah, it's like uh, like I could have I could have gone through and advertised more. Um, you know, that's the way to kind of grow the channel to grow the broadcasting. But it's like when you're dealing with a situation where it's like, wow, this is a really negative health situation that's not getting better and it's getting worse. Um, yeah, as much as I wanna, I wanna have an upbeat kind of attitude. Uh, this is me being more honest with myself and just saying, well, dealing with the not so good shit right now, so I'm not really, not really performing. But you know, by broadcasting this out, maybe, you know, maybe someone will stop in, and maybe there'll be like the the good, the good vibes that uh, will make me feel better. I don't know. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. That's how I'm kind of feeling. Uh, and for something like this, for the Minecraft map, it's been really positive, uh, uh, sort of, sort of thing for me. It's like here's. It's not like. Uh, it feels weird to say this, um, but it's like. All this stuff on Twitch is is really a highlight, for me. It's like. Uh, watching the channels that I watch, participating in, in their Discord communities and in person, you know, while they're broadcasting is a really positive thing for me, especially when when it's so easy to... It, it, it's not really like a woe is me, but just like really feeling like... A, like it's easy to feel like a victim in, the, in all of this. It's easy to say, you know, like, wow, I'm... Like I like I said to someone the other day, like I don't I don't think I'm gonna get better. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six there. So when you when you feel that way, and you have no evidence of the contrary, life gets really hard. And so we do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then that's four. That was what, what one two three four, and so it, it's easy to say, well, things will get better because you know, blah blah blah, and then we have one two three for the, the wall. But it's like you know, I've been I've been trying since, well, shoot, since uh, 
April of last year, I've been trying to get better every single, every single effort I've been making, all my, all my plans have all been to get better. And it's at a point now where it's like, uh, I'm not so sure. I don't know if it's going to get better. Um, so having something like this, having the Twitch community, it's a positive. I think I got this right. I just need to double check. You know, having having this this silly uh, map that I'm building is a real positive way for me to uh, to do these sorts of. Uh, it's like putting. It's like when I was building out the sewers uh, the other day off stream. It's like you know, here's here's my spot where I can I can focus on building uh, something that's uh, you know put my negative energy into something um, somewhat more positive than just uh, you know feeling feeling like the world's against me because it's easy to feel that way, and it's it's a good feeling as in. Uh, you know, it's it's a legitimate feeling that we should all feel comfortable having because it's it's not like you know, that's where I that's where I try to try to say I, I try to keep in mind and I always try to remind people that and remind myself too that the problems I'm having with my spine, um, where it's like I woke up this morning and it was it was like I felt like my spine was cracked in half, um, and it's it's getting worse by the day. It's getting worse by the week. Um, nothing I'm really doing helps, and so it's it's easy to f feel like you're the victim and all that. And it's it's okay to feel like the victim in that because it's for lack of better phrasing, I am the victim of my own health, and it doesn't really feel like. I can do much about it. I just, I'm watching the train wreck unfold. I'm watching my life, uh, my spine disintegrate on me, and it's frustrating. So, that's one of those situations where, it, you know, I can I can feel that way and I can be destructive about it. And so, by doing something like this, by focusing that negativity. Uh, it it does help to have a space like this to work in, or like just to escape into um, watching people's live streams, or what I was doing earlier today was I was just going to town on on uh, working on some Discord bots, and like they're they're overall really kind of stupid things to be focused on. Um, it's like I shouldn't be dealing with that I should be um, it's like I should be trying to press on ahead with talking to these companies that um, seem very intent on getting money from me without doing anything for me um, but uh, it's like for my own kind of mental health and my own kind of sanity I, I have to I have to to spend that time in a sense uh, to what is it? It's like the the GI Yurda Jeff concept of uh, releasing superfluous energy. Uh, so he had said it in regards to laughter, where if you don't dispel the negative energy, um, it can uh, become very toxic for for someone and so for me uh, I'm just doing that here in Minecraft I'm just I'm building and that's my my mind's way of coming to terms with all of this stuff where it's like there are times when I feel okay I feel like you know I I, I feel per se normal or or able to do stuff and then it's like all of a sudden um, I try to do something that seems fairly normal for me. It seems like, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a big deal. And then it just, there's just a lot of pain associated with it. And so that's why I talk about how it's like every, every week it seems like it gets worse. And so it's like screaming into a void and saying, 
hey, I'm not getting better. And so it's frustrating. It's like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to bring people down and, and advertise it. It's like, in a sense, um, it's, a. Uh, it's like when when I talk about um, not wanting to give specific personality traits to characters. It's like uh, if I were to say like, you know, giving giving talking about myself, the sort of self reflection side of things. If it was like, well, Zombie Paper is always like a upbeat kind of dude. He's always like really nice and really, you know, like if that's if we roll with that as a as a personality trait, it's an innocuous, fairly good sort of thing, and it it kind of is like my joke. I tell people like I I always joke about being on brand, as it's sort of like uh, you know you make my my brand would be part of that would be like having a, a positive sort of upbeat community. Uh, you know, being like a good presence, being a, a a positive positive element. It's like having someone around that uh, you know, like the uh, it's a, a yeah, like a, like having someone around that's a, a good person to contribute. You know, like they're they're it's more it's better because they're there. But it's like the the fallacy with that, the sort of thing with with characters and with life is that it's like you know I'm not always I'm not always that upbeat kind of dude. I'm not always the uh, um, you know it's like I don't want to be this sort of example of like a paragon of of good personality. It's like I have I have really bad days where I don't feel well today is one of those days but then i i really want to get you know it's like get feel that feeling of being of screaming out into the void and saying to these doctors like like i emailed my primary care physician um and and so he had recommended i go talk to this doctor he's like ah, oh, this doctor this muscle skeletal doctor is really good and so it's like okay, cool. Like I, I trust, I trust that doctor over uh, a, many others, and the primary reason why I do is that he actually, um, it's like you know, it's easy to say like he cares. Like that, that seems it's, it's like if I were to to look at my situation from the lens of like literature, um, it's not really caring is is a highly subjective thing it's not really uh something that like how can you prove that someone cares or not cares like that's that's a relative concept but um he when i say hey i'm having breathing problems and there's a a lung test that shows that my breathing is i can't i can't do a a, a lung test because the the results I can't breathe in deeply enough to to do the a lung test. It's easy to say, oh, well, you know, yeah, that's too bad. But then he's like, yeah, like I I understand how that's like where you, you can't breathe. Like when my pain is severe enough, it if my my lungs seize up, and I. I can talk well enough, like right now I can talk just fine, but it's difficult for me to talk at much at all, extended periods of time. Um, well, I can talk for extended periods of time, let me see if I can phrase that better. Um, it's difficult for me to, like, could, to get the full breath, to get the full the full what should be normal and i this is a new problem as of december of 2020 and so when i tell doctors this and they don't respond in ways that are helpful for me you know i'm not looking for like uh all sorts of 
sympathy or, or like, you know, oh, wow, you know, you got really messed up kind of a thing. It's like, uh, I'm not looking for, for emotive solutions. I'm not looking for like moral support from these doctors. I'm looking for answers from them. I can find moral support from, um, you know, from people, from, uh, let's see how this works, from, like, my friends or acquaintances, people around here on Twitch, you know, that's where I can find the sort of moral support, but I don't need that from a doctor, like, I need, I need the medicine that can help decrease the inflammation that's causing my, my spine to flare up the way it is, I need, I need, answers i don't need uh, i don't need friendship from these people they're not they're not my friends i can have friendships from people that i respect online and so when when i get into situations where it's like wow these people aren't even really acting like friends like they're not they're not acting in ways where um when i was referred along uh, like the old spine clinic. Um, I'm not going to say their name to protect the guilty parties, but the way they, they phrased it, the, the assistant was like, you know, we, we want to get you to the best place. We, we want to get you to the best doctors. It's like, no, that you're just lying to me now. I didn't say that to her, but that's the, that's the psychology behind it that I've been, you know, as you, as you go along, as you, um, as, especially like for, this is me kind of talking more, more of the, uh, literature kind of talk shop sort of thing that as I got more into fiction writing, I began studying more of human psychology and how people operate. Part of that is, um, I drew from my experiences with my career and in, in technical support and how people lie and how people use words. They 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 manipulate language to achieve goals. And so one of the goals with lying to people is by saying that uh you know, here is it's like uh okay, so like in in technical support um Sometimes you have to sell the user, sell the, the customer on a, on a subpar solution, something that is not, not good. It's like, uh, okay, so in Minecraft here, so it's like the, the customer wants this whole thing to be green, but let's say we've run out of green and we need to put in this. The customer and myself you know, myself as the customer would not be happy with this. But then part of technical support is by getting the, the, the customer to buy into the subpar solution of the, the lacking of materials for what they need to do their job. And so people do that it's like you kind of you kind of lie to them and say, well, we don't have we don't have green, but we do have this this uh, sea lantern block, and sea lantern is just as good. And then like I I saw this when I was doing home improvement, uh, so it's like uh, you just bury that in the floorboards, no one notices. Like uh, I was in a situation where uh, I. I was getting some, uh, for a rental place, I was getting some uh, flooring taken out and new flooring put in. And so when we got to taking out the flooring, here was this big oil stain. It, and it was like, what's going on here? You know, here's this big oil stain under the carpet. And me being the naive zombie paper of my, my mid-20s, I was like, oh, you know what's all this and the the guy was like ah oh, don't worry about it. we'll cover it up with the the floor and it'll be just fine and since i was naive i believed him and nothing really happened about it it was 
for lack of better phrasing, it was fine. But it was still one of those events where it was like, eh, he, the dude was lying to me. You know, he it was like he just wanted to get the job done as quickly as possible without really concerns for for the long term, the longevity of it. Because although I experienced no problems with it during my time in the rental unit, it still was one of those like, uh this isn't this doesn't feel right but like i say because i was too naive i didn't really know better and if i was less naive um i don't know i wouldn't have really started anything but the whole idea is that people will say things they'll, they'll say like we want you to go to the best doctor around and that's their way of kind of saying um i want to i want to stop talking to you because i don't I have nothing more to help you out with, so I will give you a, a lie that will make you feel better, so that way you can end the phone call, and then uh, we don't have to talk about, you know, what will happen next, because uh, then what will happen is I'll be like, okay, you recommend I go talk to this doctor, I, I'm fine with that, and I go talk, I go make those plans, and then the plans are oh, that doctor's booked for two months. So it's like, wow. So that's not really a good solution then. Uh, I, I don't care if that's the best doctor in the world. If it takes me two months to see that doctor, by the time I go see that doctor, my health will already be in such bad shape that I may not even be able to walk to that doctor. So... You know who, who's to say that they're the best doctor if if uh, waiting to go see them is actually detrimental to my health. But that's not a concern for them because they've already given me the advice. They've already hung up the phone. They're off the, you know, they're doing something else. And so when I look at stuff like that, it really, it really digs in in a really negative way. It makes it, it makes it feel all hopeless, right? That, you know, here I am doing the best I can for my health. I'm doing every single thing possible every day. I'm I'm pushing on ahead. It's the equivalent of like if you're if you're unemployed, um, you have a lot of time, but then you also have that sort of I wouldn't say like existential dread, but it's like you you're over, you're oppressed by the feeling of being unemployed. So it's not a joyful experience. As with me, where I'm, I'm on long-term disability. And yeah, Sinja, hey, thanks for stopping in. Uh, so uh, what I did was I reached out to my primary care physician. I said, hey, uh, this thing's going to take like two months. Um, and that's going to be really bad for my health what do you think? And so I just have to wait for a message from my doctor to see, uh, I don't need to worry about this right here. So I just have to, I have to wait for him to, to get back with me. And this doctor's cool, but you know, it's like, if I got to wait the two months, it's like, like I was just saying, like, I don't know if I can even walk there. I, you know, I may need to be be wheelchaired over and I, I already have a prescription for a wheelchair I just can't use it because I live in a second floor apartment so it's just a really bad situation just like every day it seems like there's something new that just really really makes it difficult and more so than it should be so uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess I started on a bit of a downer. Uh, you might not have heard the first part of it, but, um, yeah, like I'm going to physical therapy. Uh, I'm going tomorrow. I was able to get someone to give me a ride. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's like, like a, a lot of it was, I was just like, you know, I gotta, I gotta express it, um, because otherwise it just kind of eats me up. Uh, no, my, my complex does not have an elevator. Um, 
do you wanna do you wanna add a nice little note here on the on the collage wall and like have a color on there? And I just grab some water there. So I was just kind of in general saying, uh, you know, it's like it's it's easy to kind of let that that frustration and hopelessness, like you say, um, overpower you. But then it's like, OK, well, I should probably do something better than that. So that's where I was like, uh, you know, I'm just going to I'm going to be off brand, if you will. I'm going to I'm going to go on stream and not be the sort of. Uh, optimistic person I normally am. Uh, in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll jump down here and, and add in some cats that uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine about. So, you know, it's like uh, in the literary approach, you have uh, you have like a character that that's like the upbeat kind of character, like the uh, always a positive sort of character. Well, the problem with that is it's a bit of a lie when it comes to them having a bad day. Then they appear off-brand because it's like, well, you're normally upbeat and positive. Um, but then it's like when they're not. Let's see, we're going to try to get these cats up here. So sit. And then I'll add in your, your quotes there. Let's see. Yeah, let's see if they sit here. Ah, so. I wonder. So I like having these blocks here, but I also can't see their names here. Yeah, it's like the, so you said, have you heard of fake it till you make it? Uh, yeah, it's a, there's a bit of like the uh, sort of having a, almost like a, putting on a false sense of yourself until you feel better. And like, that's fine. Um, it's not a, it's not a terrible thing, especially when you're not feeling well. Um, but it's like deep down for me, especially, uh, it, it feels wrong when I do that. Um, because it's like, I'm not, I'm not feeling like today. It's like, I'm not feeling great about, about the, the, I would almost say like the politics behind the American healthcare system. I don't feel great about the situation I'm in. So I can't pretend to be happy about it. I can't pretend to fake that sort of sensation. So instead, it's just like, uh, let me just come on here and let me just, uh, you know, rather than the, the sort of normally like like yesterday and in, in, in other podcast, uh, like I, I say like these are like podcasts. So that way you, you don't have to, you can tab out, look away while you're, you're listening, you know, it's like, it, there are days where I don't really feel like that. And today I just was like, okay, I'm going to be in a spot where I, I want to, uh, I want to do some work here in Minecraft, but I also need to acknowledge that I'm not in the best feeling right now. So you said, uh, not, not expressing the fake it till you make it is one way to look at it. I think it's like trying to, I think it's trying to see the positive one down and smiling to stay on the right track. Smiling really releases endorphins to save off depression. Not always easy. Yeah, I, I think part of it too um, was uh, I wanted, it's like uh, doing this, this live stream and it's, it's a very positive thing for me, especially in like I say for how I'm feeling. It's very positive to do these live streams where I go in and I, I talk with people 
and it's a more if you will it's a it's a way to uh you know we can talk about very specific things um and it, i don't know it's it's like uh like it feels a little more real to me to to do these sorts of live streams um and chatting on discord is good too oh i need to do this so I do on Discord as well. I, I was doing that for for a good part of the morning and whatnot because it it was a way to help me feel better. But then I was just like, you know, a lot of what I should be doing um, is is taking my life into my own hands. Of of like, if I'm not feeling well, let me just get in here. Let me just kind of do do stuff that that is a positive contribution. The creative outlet, right? And thank you for following there, Nigel's Neverland. Um, if you're here in the the chat, I can. Uh, what I do is I'll uh, uh, I can add you in. Um, I do like a thing where I add people's names to a block on the wall. Um, and so, let's see. So. Yeah, it's like like uh like today I was like, okay, I'm not really feeling great, but uh let me just go ahead and do this anyways. Let me just go ahead and uh you know, be be here cuz there are days where it's like you don't feel good, but then uh you know, you just kind of you just kind of do something that kind of takes your mind off of it. And let's see. You can hang out there, and so yeah, I, I think I think today is one of those days where if I just, you know, kind of, kind of broadcast myself out there and kind of just say, hey, you know, this is more of a, a me being earnest and honest with myself. This is how I kind of am today. Then it's a good way to, to mix it up so I'm not always like you know, my avatar it kind of implies that I'm just like kind of a always upbeat. Uh, that's not always the case. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of thinking of how how to rearrange these cats so I can see their name tags. And you said uh, on days when I feel crummy, I use self-care tools in my toolbox and in a sense, this is like uh, like I know what you're talking about with psychology toolboxes and whatnot, um, and that's what this this is for lack of better phrasing. Where I do go through, and this is my uh, in a sense having this this thing to build out is my toolbox of um, um, okay. Let let's do this. So it's my way of. Uh, taking that negative energy uh, I don't know if you heard this part Sinja I was talking about uh, the the philosopher uh, Yurdijev G.I. Yurdijev talked about superfluous energy and how if you if you don't release that then that turns um, it makes it, it's somewhat bad for your health if you will and so I was I was kind of thinking about that and jamming on that notion. So it's uh it's like figuring out what works well for for people and and like like I bet you could you you would know what I'm talking about here where you have uh you have something in your self-care toolbox that works on some occasions but not other occasions. And so then you say uh on a day like today um I am feeling more social. I'm feeling more apt and interested in, in talking to people because then I can, it's like, I can, uh, I can say how I'm feeling and people might say, I know how you're feeling. I have some ideas that may be helpful. And, you know, of course it's a, it's a take it or leave it. And yeah, like, like you're saying, uh, that's why, that's why you have several options. And yeah, sometimes the hibernate just kind of like the hole up is is a good way to go. Um, I find 
the reason why I was kind of avoiding that, not doing that myself was I was looking at the situation. And I was like, well, I'm, it, it's a feeling of powerlessness. And I don't mean powerless as in like power as ego, but just like knowing that someone has has my health and their power is a really good feeling to know that uh um i haven't counted offhand how many doctors i i saw in 2020 about my spine um but i would say safely that that number was somewhere between 20 or 12 and 20 doctors um and like some of them were were completely useless and i i really don't understand what 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 happened but like one doctor um he he told me he's like i don't have your charts so i can't really help you too much without knowing your your medical history and i had to wait 3 weeks to see this doctor and i was like why would I go see this doctor for a follow-up appointment if he had three weeks to look at my charts but failed to do so? Didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Yeah, it, and I would, I've been thinking about this a lot too, Sinjay. You said the difference between an, uh, an A-plus doctor and a C-minus doctor. I think I'd heard this quote. Um, yeah, it was like early... Uh, like mid to 2020 um and i don't think this is i don't think the the quality of doctors is directly because of covid because i saw some doctors about headaches that i was having in early 2020 and late 2019 and i was having the same kind of same kind of thing so the only the only difference is that now doctors um it's like they're a lot of them are on furlough, like the physical therapists are, are furloughed. But uh, uh, the the idea of uh, A plus versus a C minus doctor is that uh, the C minus doctor graduated, and once you graduate, it doesn't matter what grade you got. And sure, that's fine for. I'll be honest, like like in college, I went to college for certain classes and I didn't always get A's but I'm not practicing to be a, you know a, a student of math or or anything like that it's like I'm so I, it doesn't matter if it's a, if I get a C in this class but if I'm a doctor I should be a, a, an A doctor and yeah, that that was where, like you'd said, uh, you should never see that C minus doctor again. So, I've been. Uh, <laughs> that's why I've seen some twenty doctors because a lot of them, you know, you see them and you realize like, oh, this doctor's full of shit. Uh, I'm not gonna go waste my time seeing this doctor and get inadequate care. And then you kind of start to feel like, wow, well maybe the problem is with me. Maybe it was. Uh, maybe i'm i have too high of expectations and then i think to myself well my only expectation is that i get better that i'm able to um walk around without a cane that'd be kind of cool but i don't know i think for some doctors they look at me and they're like oh well you're you're a uh, a healthy like using air quotes here it's like you're you're healthy you're in your your 30s you shouldn't you, you know like we don't really understand why your spine is acting up the way it is so um it's too bad huh yeah and that you said uh it can be frustrating waiting for an appointment and then have it be a waste of time and you know it, it's like it would have been one thing if I would have been perfectly fine with it if the doctor was like, hey, unfortunately, I don't have your records. Um, I can't do much for you until I get all of that. But let's come up with a plan. Let's figure out how we can help you in the meantime. You know, like he could do he could have done something. But instead, it was just like he did a physical. and He's like, oh, OK, cool. Well, you know, follow up with me later. And it's just one of these like, how about if I don't 
And so that's, uh, you know, that unfortunately it was me, me saying, okay, I have to, I have to start from square one again, but I've been doing that enough where it's like, I'm just kind of used to it by now. And he said, um, my friend in Ontario always had a cane and with good physical therapy and exercise, he lost a lot of weight and slowly could walk without a cane and ride a bicycle. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that once my pain subsides, um, because I, I think it's an inflammation thing, and I think it's something where um, if I if I get the right medication that treats the inflammation and decreases whatever sensation is going on there, then I could because I I can uh, I can walk around in like my apartment. I can walk small distances of maybe a few feet without needing to use a cane. But it's like, you know, I kind of have to slowly, intentionally walk and just be very careful with it. And so if uh, if the inflammation goes down, and like you're saying, everything's connected, um, then, then it's like, okay, well, things can, can slowly subside so then I can... Uh, I can start to re regain my health and walk around normally again, uh, using air quotes for the word normal, of course. Um, and like, like, here's the thing too, I'll, I'll talk about it because, you know, it's a, it's a whatever thing. It's a, you know, we're here, we're talking about it. So I have a prescription for a, uh, a pain management medication. I can say the name of it off stream but I prefer not to say it on stream just because um, it's very easy for people to judge with with hearing the name of a medication. It's like, oh, like you're saying addictive. Um, and so everyone, when all these doctors hear that word, they think, oh, you're you're addicted to this medication. And that'd be one thing if it was actually addictive because... Um, I'm, I forget the exact number of years, but I've been sober for like eight years since 20, 2020 or, or sorry, since 2012 or 2013 from, I haven't drank alcohol in, in that amount of time. And so it's like, you know, here I am a, I know about sobriety and this medication doesn't, doesn't inebriate me at all. And so why would I feel that it, it's like they're overblowing the situation and causing me harm by not helping me get the relief I need? And so stairs, and then let's see. You sent me a message there really quick, so let's see what you said. So it... It's like, uh, like I know, I know all about addiction. Um, I've been writing about addiction on my website for, for years. Um, you know, the, the psychological dependency of having, having something to calm your nerves is a very real thing. I understand all of that very well. Um, the problem is that what I am finding is that doctors are using that as an excuse. It's like, I tell some of these doctors, like, I don't want, I don't want a painkiller. I want a, a, I want a medication that decreases the inflammation. So like, like a, like a prednisone is an anti-inflammatory medication. No one's, no one's taking, uh, no one's taking prednisone as a recreational sort of thing. But then these doctors, they, and this is where I honestly believe that the problem with the American healthcare system, the reason why there's such a problem with addiction is because doctors fail to treat the patients. So they say, oh, you have a, you have a, a pain problem, so we'll give you some medication. And then it's like, oh, you're still having pain. Well, uh, 
you're we can't treat you anymore um it's it's a uh, what happened in july was i went to see a pain management doctor and he was a sort of his he honestly it was like this dude was like a, a men's warehouse catalog reject he wore a suit instead of a, a doctor's uh you know scrubs and then it was like I told him, like, yeah, I'm still in a lot of pain. Um, and instead of helping me, he's like, you should go to the ER. And so I did, and they're like, um, we can't really help you. You should go see a spine doctor. I was like, why am I being thrown out everywhere? So, like, that's just one example of how, how all these doctors, there. it's like unchecked um, power. So this doctor was like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm the one that's controlling you. So it was like a power trip. And it wasn't even like, uh, the medication he prescribed to me was like a muscle relaxant, um, a nerve medication, and then a very low pain management medication. It was like, just, just completely just, he was, he was making it seem like, like the prescription he was giving me was like the most insanely addictive chemical known to man. I was like, I know, and I'm not even, you know, we'll say it frankly, I'm not even getting high over this. So why would I feel addicted to this? You're just making it out to be a big deal. So you can have, you can control me, you can have power over me. So it was a really messed up situation. And that's, that's how the American healthcare system is in, in a nutshell. And so when these doctors act certain ways, I'm just like, I don't want to deal with that. So um, you had said here, I'm just getting caught up. Um, central pain syndrome is caused by damage to the nervous system. Yeah, like when I, so when I had my surgery uh, in August, um, I experienced problems with like my tailbone hurting, um, which still persists. Uh, like right now, I, my tailbone hurts, but it's not like standing or moving around too much will help. Um, so let's see, I'll make a quick note here. You said to look up the central nervous system problem. I'll take a look through it. It's, uh, it's something I'll do off stream. But uh, it it's just one of those things where it's like, uh, and, and keep on throwing ideas at me too. It's it's all good. Uh, um, I've I've been dealing with all of this for since April, and and that's why I said too. Like you you had said, uh, it sounds like the surgery had damaged my spine or my tailbone. The the I forget how to pronounce that word, the, the tailbone bone. And so um, the spine clinic I went to, they they acted in a way where they're like, um, everything we've done is fine. And everything we, like you're, you're they did two x-rays. Um, and you'd said like, not necessarily the surgery that might've been because one doctor had said maybe it was trauma from being transferred over from like when I was put under anesthesia and that maybe there was trauma when I was transferred over. Um, and so you'd said about maybe it was a pre-existing issue. Um, I did not have any tailbone problems prior to that surgery in, in August. So, um, So like, uh, so I had my surgery, let's see how this works. It's gonna be here and there's gonna be like this. So my surgery was August 31st. Um, my, before that I had no tailbone pain whatsoever. Nothing, nothing at all. Immediately following surgery, I had immense tailbone pain and I've had that to the point now where my tailbone hurts, but I can live with it. 
it's a pain where it's like you just kind of wake up and you're like well this is a terrible pain i have to deal with constantly but it's just what i have to deal with and so um you had said spinal epidural So I can I can say this here too while I look up what you mean by spinal epidural. So I had my surgery. I woke up but I was completely paralyzed. Um the the anesthesia caused me for some reason to be paralyzed from I woke up at noon on August 31st. I was paralyzed where I could not move fingers, toes, anything until 4.30 a.m. the next day. So complete total body paralysis. Um, the doctor that did the surgery failed to tell me anything about what was going on throughout the entire process. He failed to tell any of my family, my emergency contacts about what was going on. And so uh, I, I said to the doctor's office, and I called up and I left a voicemail with their patient um, their patient line. I said, uh, I want to talk to another doctor. I told my insurance as well where it was like, th this doctor told me nothing about what was going on. I was paralyzed. Um, and yet he did nothing to actually tell me or anyone what was going on. He waited until I felt better before he... He finally said, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. And then I was like, well, go fuck off. You know, you've you've treated me like not a human being. You waited until I was better so that way you didn't have to worry about any anything going on. Like, why would I want to see you again? You're, you're, you're scum to me. And so that clinic... I had to go to another doctor with their clinic. They said, well, we're going to do the follow-up. And their follow-up doctor was like, oh, I'm retiring in a month. Um, it seems like something where maybe you should go get a second opinion. So we'll send you along. And that's where they sent me to that clinic that the dude had no idea what was going on. Um, he was like, well, I don't have any of your charts, so I can't do anything with you. And so it was like, it was just a, just a complete nightmare. It was like, and, and you'd think too, that I had that surgery, so I should be better. But like I've told doctors, I said, uh, if, if this surgery were like, a, a like buying a big screen TV, um, I would want my money back. Uh, I, I am not better because of that surgery. I'm worse because of the surgery. I want my money back kind of a thing and but instead I'm stuck with it my I've had this surgery I have a I have a really big scar on the on my back from the surgery but there will be it, I'm not better because of that surgery whereas I was promised that it that it was and so you had said too you said uh, uh I need a lower spinal MRI I've had two MRIs and so here's the funny thing, which I'm sure you'll you'll really appreciate. So they took an MRI of my mid-back and my neck. So I said, well, what about the tailbone? And they said, well, we don't, we don't need a tailbone MRI. We don't need a lower spinal MRI. It's like, that's where the pain is. Why don't you go do the MRI of that? And that's when they were like, oh, you should... You should uh, you should go see someone else, and so it's it's one of these like it just a it yeah like you're saying like WTF it's it's a whole fucked up situation that I found myself mixed up in, and so then like I say today when it's like you may see someone in about two months at the earliest, it's like. Yeah, you, you said like they're passing me around like a hot potato. It really is. It really is a matter of like, uh, it's like, it's like the the show House, House MD with 
with the idea of like here are zebra cases where they're like super complex as soon as it's moderately difficult for any of these people are like uh uh let's throw the hot potato to someone else let's give them the 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 pleasure of dealing with this situation and so fortunately this my my primary care physician my my you know he he's just a i think he's fresh out of school but at least for the first doctor i've met since April of 2020, so almost one year, uh, he actually is somewhat invested in like, hey, I believe that you're in pain and, and I know how that feels. I want you to get out of pain. It's like, wow, for once I've met a doctor that actually seems to have studied the Hippocratic Oath. So my my original uh, surgery you'd asked about, uh, my original surgery was a um i noticed let let me give you the context first it was uh uh in april i noticed back pain directly behind my um my belly button and then they did uh, a mri to find that there were two slipped discs so they did a laminectomy and discectomy of the l was it the L3, L4, L4, L5? Um, I'll paste in what, what they did for the surgery so you have that. So yeah, my, my PCP actually, like, despite having seen 20 doctors, like, okay, I, I've rolled rolled all this problem, you know, I've, I've, I've run across all these problems, but now I've found a doctor that actually is interested in helping so that's kind of cool. That's like, there's progress going. So it's, so I had that surgery and you think like, oh, that's, that's really nice. It's good. Surgery will help, but it didn't. Um, so yeah, like I say, like, like that's why today I was like, uh, I'm really feeling really shitty over having to wait another possibly two months to go see another doctor. And you'll love this too, Sinja. You said uh, the surgery was a fuck up. So I went to, I've, I was referred over to a sports medicine and pain management doctor. Um, when I talked to him, I was like, oh, you know, I saw this other doctor. Uh, you know, he was the one who did the surgery. And, and the dude was like, oh, he's retiring. So I think what happened was he fucked up so badly that he went to retire. And personally, I, I wouldn't blame him because uh, I wouldn't, uh, I would not recommend him. Um, I I don't, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I, it's like, you know, you, you, you try to think of um, life as like this compassionate sort of thing where you wouldn't wish harm on even your greatest enemy, the kind of kind of thing and then it's like uh you said orthopedic surgeon yeah so like uh like uh i you say orth orthopedic surgeon i forget exactly what this what my doctor was uh and like i say some of this is like you know i don't want to i don't want to dox myself um too much like I, I give I give the information I feel is generic enough and I, I've written about this at length as well on my website so like I've 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 mentioned a lot of this sort of stuff but uh, you know the doctor's names and their their sorts of things the whole thing is like even if even if this doctor the one that did the surgery was a complete fuck up and completely ruined my life it's like you know who am I to be the one to uh um, per se, um, get him to be completely disbarred from all of medicine. Like, it's like he, he should, if he has any morals or ethics, probably did what he just did, which was retire. Cause it's like, oh, I've, you know, here, here's the situation. But, uh, yeah, it's one of those things you said, uh, I might need a second surgery. 
Uh, and it's it's like, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I'd prefer not to because the first surgery was such a, it took so much out of me uh, mentally, physically, that it's like, I would prefer not to, but at the same time, I haven't been better since, since all of this. Um, and so it's like, okay, what do I, what other options do I have, but doing a surgery, another one. So, you know, we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Like you'd said, it's traumatic. It's like, I try not to harbor the sorts of like, how, how do you phrase it? Like, uh, life is a very difficult thing and I, I don't want, I don't want an event like this to own me or to take ownership of me. Um, but, uh, there's something very terrible about, about living in a situation where it's like, I can't even, I can't even walk to a grocery store. I can't even, um, you know, go purchase groceries because the, my spine won't let me. And so it's, it's unfortunate. That's why, like I say, like, although it, it's unfortunate for me to, to jump on here in a sort of, not really a bad mood, but it's like, it, I'm just being honest with people. I'm just saying like, here's who I am. Um, I'm not having a, not having a, a great day today. Um, and he said, too bad he didn't sue the hospital. And it's like, yeah, like that's who really is at fault. Is it the, is it the doctor that fucked it all up? Um, is it the, uh, so when, when I had the anesthesia, um, I, I really chewed into the guy, um, who gave me the, the anesthesia. I was like, you told me nothing about what was going on. You didn't treat me like a human being. You know, if you were in my situation, if you were under anesthesia and you woke up and no one told you what was going on, no one, no one was letting you know, like, hey, there's this weird complication uh, where they didn't know exactly what was going on. They didn't know the exact... Um, the most they said was the guy was like, it was possible you had a, um, how did he phrase it? He phrased it as a, I have it in my notes here. A, you may have had a neurological deficit that may have been caused by a psychosomatic physical break. And so that was the most they had for their theory on why I was paralyzed for the better part of a day and a half. No, less than one day. But it was like, you get that sort of feeling where it's like you wake up and you're, you're paralyzed and, and you're the people you trust with your life. The people that you say, hey, I'm, I'm trusting you with my life to put me under, to help me out. Uh, it's like if if this dude doesn't even want to give me the time of day to help me get better why would i be concerned over the petty bullshit of of people and their their problems and in situations like you know if someone's like too impatient because they're driving too fast it's like no I, why would i care about your your feelings in that regard like you you've you don't your impatience in traffic is not the end of the world. And so uh, you'd said, uh, he's saying my mind caused the trauma. Yeah, he, he basically was trying to make up something to, to say that I was faking it. And interesting, you had said uh, that the anesthesiast gave me too much anesthesia, which caused it, my body too long to... to to have it wear off. I had thought about that as, as a possible cause where, um, it was like, here I was just like, it, it took, uh, like I'll, I'll remember it, 
I was moving my fingers around so much that I was giving myself a headache because I was causing too much strain on my mind and my body by moving my my fingers around. I was like, okay, like let me do whatever I can to prevent, you know, like to to answer the question of is this dude faking it? Is zombie paper just going in and just like fucking around with us? I was trying so hard that I I was straining my mind and my body to move my fingers. And so from that experience it's like, okay, I'll I have I have a I have a new outlook on life where it's like, you know, okay, the people that treat me well so like, you know, you're here today, you're 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 hanging out and you're giving me a moment of your time. Um I appreciate that more than I probably ever would have if if not for the surgery because it's like you know you, you're spending your time here with me that's great so you say temporary paralysis is normal well uh this dude had no idea about that he he was not aware of paralysis like that uh, but instead it was um it was the patient's fault it was what i got out of it and so it was uh not really a good feeling. And so we have Nigel's Neverland uh, just subs just did the follow here. So yeah, it's it's rough. <sighs> I talked with that uh, with the uh, post anesthesiist office the the PACU. I talked with that doctor for a good hour and a half about my thoughts, and I could I could tell that only a little bit was he actually he wasn't he didn't really care. The most he wanted was just to make sure he wasn't sued, and so you know that's the sort of thing where it's like, what can I do but just uh, get better and then do my do my sort of thing, whether it's um, you know, like writing about the whole process and getting to the point where, um, yeah, like like you just said, uh, the doctor was probably defe deflecting the blame because they fucked up, and I I imagine that's the case too. So uh, it's not surprising to me that that doctor retired. So yeah, they they did not the whole. The whole company, that that uh, the surgeon's office, they all acted in, in this really weird sort of way, where they really acted like they they were. Uh, um, I don't want to phrase it like this because it sounds really bad, but it it sounds you know they they acted like when they when they kicked me out the door, they had said. Uh, we want you to go to the best doctor around. We want you to go to to the the best, and we recommend this place. And it was like by then I was already like, I don't trust you at all. Uh, send all my records along to my primary care physician. He'll he'll help me out because even if even if it turns out that I can't trust him, he works for a larger clinic. And so when he works for a larger clinic like that, um, you know, he, he almost in a sense has to, he has to be held accountable where, um, what I found as maybe not a general truth, but what I found, um, I worked with this one, um, I had my old primary care physician. He was like an independent doctor. So the problem with that was that they could, they could own all aspects of my health, including not releasing medical records, which is what they did. They they uh, they prevented releasing my medical records to my insurance company, which almost caused my insurance company to deny my claims because uh, you know they they didn't have the records, so they're like, well, this you know we don't know what to do here, so he's probably faking it or whatever, you know, re reasonably. 
reasonable assumption. You're probably faking it if if no one can prove what you're do what's going on. So they blocked all these claims until I told them, what do I need to do to unblock this? And I told them this too. I I was really proud of myself for saying this. I said to this small little little primary care um, clinic, I said, you are we weaponizing HIPAA. Don't do that. And so... It's just something uh, you had said, uh, profit and politics. Yeah, so, you know, like, that's where uh, I'm kind of kind of just trying to trying to put a positive spin on it. I did. Uh, sorry, I for, I'm getting a little bit of the context mix mixed up here but I, I think I'm I think I'm getting what you're getting there Sinja and here too let me let me do this as a shout out I don't know if you stream at all Sinja but uh, Sinja Minx so no game but uh, it, it's a uh, it's unfortunate you, you say like move to Canada um, I live in the United States, and it's like, yeah, there there's some some nice things about the United States. There's some ni not so nice things. Oh, you you don't stream. Yeah, that was that was really. Oh, when I said weaponizing HIPAA, well, I mean they did. They were weaponizing HIPAA. They were they were using HIPAA to prevent giving information as I ask them to to a company that they um, my my insurance company they said uh, they said some some clinics will do that sometimes where they'll uh, they're they're hard to work with and so my my insurance um, person was like you know sometimes they're just like this and you know we'll we'll work with you we'll help you out but they do stuff like that so it's it's not a it's not a completely unreasonable thing but it's just unfortunate that i had to deal with it and so yeah overall i'm really happy that i did um decide that i wanted to share my negativity with the world because you know here here i am as an honest um person i i want to convey my it's like how do you how how did a, a friend of mine said it like this it's like talking your truth and so it's like that makes it sound like you're lying but it's like what everything i've said today um because i'm because i'm live streaming because i'm live streaming this it's recorded and so it's like here i am expressing myself 100 percent honestly there is no there is no lie to any part of this and you'd said uh, well sharing your story educates others to advocate for their medical rights and and honestly too um when i because like what I'm doing for my, my fiction writing, and I've also been writing about this for my essays all along the way, is I worked in healthcare IT for, for four years. I worked for three years at a large hospital, and then I worked for a year in a pathology lab. Um, it's something where where I want to give give my information out and and you say be careful about my privacy and yeah to to a certain extent i i give this information without in a way that's non nondescript enough where it's like you know you could probably dig if you really wanted to but it's like all i'm doing is just sharing this information and when i get better when i'm 
when I'm able to write my fiction again, I will uh, I will be using all of these experiences to help me write novels where I'll I'll go into some of this detail and I'll go into some of how doctors act so that way the doctor that gave me the surgery that that fucked it all up you know he's he's going to live the famous life as he's retired um but uh I'll write in the way where it's like okay people can't act like this they can't treat patients like this when they wake up from anesthesia they they can't do this it's not right and everyone involved with that you know they they've all kind of moved on they've all kind of like figured out their way of like like you were saying uh figure out ways to blame the patient by saying oh it's a psychosomatic break i understand what that means they want to say that that it was my mind that was playing tricks on me instead of the anesthesia was too strong and it caused the damage it did well you know it's like the there's the uh kind of bringing it back to minecraft in a way is to build what i'm building right now the sort of the sewers um or like the evil medical uh, apartments that i'm building or what i plan to build all of evil medical as a hospital within minecraft you know like metaphorically a lot of that is building but also some of that is destroying so right now i'm destroying this wall i'm destroying some blocks but i'm trying to rebuild it and so it's it's like in a sense you have to you have to destroy to rebuild and for something like that for something like the health care of human beings my story should never have to have been experienced by anyone in all of humanity because it it's like that's the horror story that's like you know here here's something that it's like you hear what i what i tell you and i say it it's it's my truth that i've experienced it i think like wow that no doctor should ever act like that no doctor should have you wake up from anesthesia not tell you what's going on or explain that hey we don't know what's going on but maybe we'll figure it out maybe you know just give us a little bit of time but we're here for you and because i had none of that it's like i have a fundamental distrust of these people that then go in and and say oh yeah you know we're super cool but then what that does in a more charitable sense is it helps me see people that that will go in and like like yourself sinja where you you have shared some time with me today and you've you've been very gracious with information about you know let me translate that for you from the the medical perspective into something that me as a you know i always just peripherally related to healthcare fixing computers and whatnot can understand that's something that i appreciate that and and that's why i do the things like add people's names onto the wall because it's like you you know spend spend the time that you have to share information with me and so i want what my intentions are primarily is to not to like fuck people up and make them have you know terrible lives i'm not after like a a one for one you know eye for an eye kind of a thing it's it, it's easy to say that it's easy to kind of be like oh yeah i want to just completely ruin this guy's life it's like no i, I want it to be more of a safeguard i want it to be the end of the day where it's like oh yeah it's possible that this could happen so let's never let's make sure that there are processes in place that prevent this from ever happening to anyone else again because it was really scary for me to wake up and not be able to move my fingers or toes not be able to do anything at all and it was like that i can't even do what i can right now is still like i'm kind of surprised um 
but it's one of those the most you do is you just say okay well that's that's how life is right now for me so if i can get better i'm not really in it to to ruin people's lives but just to expose that hey you, maybe when you do surgeries maybe you should have these sorts of checks and balances where you're you do a surgery and if there's any kind of complication maybe you automatically tell the patient hey um you should know that we're still looking into what's going on instead of giving me the silent treatment and so yeah i guess i guess that's the long of it so like when i have these experiences like today where it's like i had this this person i called up and he was like yeah um so the next appointment is probably going to be late february or early march it just all these thoughts kind of come back to mind of uh you know having to deal with the the months of waiting for subpar treatment and when i do get any decent treatment it's like oh um we can't help you because it's a it's a blah 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 issue it's just like what a fucked up situation so yeah i guess that's where i wanted to kind of get on here and just kind of like do a little bit of building and that's where i appreciate too there sinja that you 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 were gracious enough with your time to stop in and and listen to my uh my woeful t- wolf woeful tale of uh of trying to get better and trying to experience the normal health if you will the normal of of how i was feeling prior to having my spine basically say uh eh, no you're not going to be doing pretty well here so you had said sounds like a roller coaster and and so here too this is the part where um I try to keep keep mindful um, and I try to make sure that uh, I remember that just because I've had this terrible experience doesn't mean that I, I am superior to other people with the experiences that they've had where, yeah, I had this bad experience, but other people have had bad experiences in other regards. And so you know, we're all in it together. Um, So you had said, have I Googled the anesthesiast or the surgeon? Uh, The short answer is prior to surgery, I didn't do as good of a job uh, at researching because I was still trusting of the American healthcare system. In that time, I was still um, in the mindset that they're people that have have committed their lives to helping patients get better so i didn't really think much of it you know it's it's not like uh i was thinking of it the equivalent and and this is something that is an is a sort of take it for granted but it's like until you have these situations you don't know that there are doctors that are c minus or f doctors you don't know this about about doctors and you think like all doctors are great and like we're taught in the you know in growing up that doctors are these these people that are almost like walking gods that we should revere them and it's like wait they're human beings so even the best ones they're still just people and so it's a uh, it's something where like i say like um you know, let, let's let say, let's give the hypothetical that I get better and let's give that, let's roll with that hypothetical where maybe I need, you know, whether that's another surgery, whether physical therapy um, gets me better. It's like, okay, well then I have, I have plenty of writing fodder to write about. And it's like, um, you know, it, it's something where I could, I want to write about it from the approach of not vilifying but just to kind of give the sort of perspective that hey wait uh, you'd said like 
doctors are godlike, thus the ego. Um, and then you say, uh, can you make a suggestion to which I say, yeah, sure, go for the suggestion. Because, uh, you know, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to tear people's lives apart, but I just want to, I want, uh, if I were to say, become a best-selling fiction writer, I would want to only do that so that way people could say, hey, um, this is good to know. We should probably be more careful about this going forward. And so um, I'm waiting to see. You wrote if I versus when I. So the the thing with like uh, like with literature with um, phrasiness, yeah, I, I know I know the the sort of uh, positive affirmations of you know I will get better, but the thing is is my health has only decreased since surgery, and I've had an uphill battle of trying to get through to any doctor to say hey I'm not doing well. Because a majority of these doctors, they just are like, oh, you want a painkiller. You want to get high. It's like, nah. If if that were the case, there are much more efficient routes to go than looking for medium strength painkillers that don't actually help me too much. I'm looking for medicine. I'm looking for treatment options to get better. And so that's why that's why I say if I get better because frankly I haven't I've been up against this this problem for nearly one year um, and I haven't been getting better and so it's it's a gamble at this point it's like will I get better I don't know you know there is the sort of uh, I, I I appreciate the the sentiment and that's where I'm I'm expressing myself honestly as the I feel the pessimism I feel the negativity um, it should be better that I don't but it would be lying for me to try to pretend that I'm I know for sure I'm going to get better so yeah I mean I I, I want to say this in in the way where um, I I definitely appreciate the uh, the 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 suggestion i i know i know your intentions i know that they're they're in good spirit so i want to honor that and say i, I appreciate that um and that's just where i for me right now today and in general i just don't know that for sure but if i do you know when i get better you know let's let's roll with that example when i get better then my life is a lot uh, has a lot more of a perspective to it for one it's like for people that that treat me poorly online you know say say there's someone that just is a complete a complete poo poo head um i have less tolerance for them now uh, and not like in a sense like i'm going to be rude but it just less tolerance in that uh, they can be they can keep on being a poo poo head but i'm not going to really hang out with them there's no point to it and so yeah it's something where it's it's like you got to look at the good in all of this and that's kind of like I, I imagine you might agree with this Sinjo where it's like you look at you look at the positives of of what happened and say yeah this is a, a traumatic event that has shaped my perspective of reality completely but it doesn't mean I have to be an asshole to everyone. It doesn't mean I have to be a just a complete rude dude. Um, I can use my skill set and my my perspective to help others, so that way in the future, maybe I can help prevent this from happening to someone else. That maybe they're too, maybe they don't know how to ask the questions to make sure they get the right treatment options. And so they, they do what I did and assume that things will work out because I didn't know any better than to assume. And you say, yeah, life is too short for crappy people. And so, 
Yeah, that's where it, I, you know, it's like it's easy to say, like, I should go sue the doctor. But, like, the American the American legal system is so, so bad where it's like, if I were to say, like, uh, like, for all of this, it's like, you know, if I were like, oh, I'm going to go sue this doctor, well, that would be a pain in the ass just to kind of get through the door. And I don't know how many thousands of dollars it would be to to even get a case started. And even by then, it would be so, you know, like, here's here's this dude versus this revered healthcare professional doctor. It, it's like it's stacked up against us just by the very fiber of, of being, by having these sorts of situations where we, we want to revere these people for admittedly very good reasons. It's, it's not like we're revering the, the doctor because they, they like the color red. It's nothing like that. It's like we revere these people because according to their role in society, they're the ones that help us when we need them the most. But the problem is, and I was kind of thinking about this last time I was building down here, kind of what I do, this is like my, um, the space I'm working on is like, let me, let me dredge through my worst thoughts and let me just kind of like put them away. So they're in a, in a physical sewer it's kind of like the actual like like kind of like where I why I'm building out all this stuff I just kind of um kind of build whatever down here it's like because these doctors have unchecked power and unchecked ego they don't have to go check with anyone to say hey why is my patient feeling this way or why is this situation happening they can just they come up with an answer they just say um the patient's acting like this because of X, Y, Z. And then no one follows up with that. No one verifies that information. And so then it's like unchecked power. They they become these, these people that when it, they're at the best, they're able to help save lives. But at the worst, they, they break lives. And so that's where when I tell my fiction the way I will... Um, when I wrote my first novel, it's like almost like these doctors were just more of background characters. But now it's like, oh, I have a voice and I have a way where I can, I can help by showing people that there are people that, that you know, here are bad doctors and here are, I can draw examples from my life or when I have people you know, that may be interested in helping edit or read or write little bits, you know, like contribute to the literary sense or even the more of the, like yourself as a medical professional, um, may be able to validate some information. The whole thing is not to like crucify people, but just to correct um, systematic behavior, whether it's in the healthcare hospitals themselves or even if it's a matter of saying we have to make sure there are checks and balances to ensure that when people wake up in the PACU that we have contingency plans for what happens if they are paralyzed what happens if there are problems that come up these sort of complications and that's where, like you, you say, you're not good. You said, uh, I'm not a literary editor or copy editor, but you are good at medical language. And so I've been thinking about this too, um, because I, I've been writing um, the way I, I've been writing basically for, for four years. Um, I realized in, in August of 2016 that I really enjoy writing um, more than anything else, um, I guess arguably Minecraft is a really fun thing. That's that's uh, something I enjoy doing as well. But uh, you know, like in the in the top ten things I like to do, um, writing is is like probably the top one. 
if not like top 10. And so when I write, it's like, I what I need in the sense of like want out of out of doing stuff like Twitch and like building out stuff in Minecraft. It's finding people that can help me fill the gaps in my knowledge to tell these stories well. So it's like, you know, like you say, like, uh, you know, the medical language. Um, that's something I don't know much in in much detail. And so I'd be looking for people like yourself if you're interested in, in helping me with telling the stories that that convey the medical information accurately and it's not like a committal thing at the moment it's it's just like my general plans do include finding people that can help and it's like even if even if it's like someone that doesn't like writing or reading at all but they know a little bit about about whatever it's like if you're if you're all sympathetic toward what my plans are uh, which is like building out all these set pieces to help me tell stories, then, yeah, I'm definitely, I definitely would appreciate basically all the help I can get. And I appreciate that you you say that you're you're open to me asking medical terminology and stuff. So, yeah, um, I I appreciate it. Thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I'm still going to keep on going, but I just figure that's the good, good point to say thank you so much for, for listening to me as I, as I rancid into the void. And then, uh, there was someone that, that was interested enough to stop in and, and chat with me for a bit about what was going on. So, yeah, let's see, let's, um, cause I feel sufficiently good now. I feel like I've, I've. Um, done the sort of, you know, it's like, like, here's, here's something that just really is a negative in my life. Let me go improve on that. And as I did that too, and I went and I made the, this restroom here. So that was a cool thing. You know, I didn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't like doing anything nefarious with my time. I wasn't using that negative energy I had built up to, uh, you know, or like go get some alcohol or something and get wasted. So, you know, they're very, they're very real and responsible things that can be done instead of using that negative energy for, for bad. So yeah, I appreciate your, your time here. And so I figure what we'll do since I'm feeling a lot better. Um, let's see. I think, I think we'll have a screenshot like this is we'll go up and we'll take a look at some of the other spaces up uh, up on the, the surface there once I get let's get you moved over a little bit yeah you said uh, uh, part of my toolbox connection it is it it, it is like a, a toolbox of sorts where it's like um, I was jamming on this idea before and I'll bring it up again because I think it's relevant. So um, the way I understand my mind to work is that it's very highly compartmentalized. So there are all these little little bits and moving sections. So, for example, if I'm feeling bad, then I work down the sewer which um, within within the literature I'm writing, it's almost like kind of like a joke place in that I'm not going to really write. Um, the real characters aren't really going to go to the sewers. But it's like it's an area where I can express some creativity in a kind of um, in a low impact environment. So let's dump the inventory. So then what I do want to do with my, with my, uh, my time and my kind of using this space is I want to, want to use this as like, here's where the main character of my novels will teleport and she'll just kind of, the, the start, the premise of the novella is that she'll just kind of, you know, appear here 
and then she'll just kind of walk around and like you said so many cats kind of a funny thing on that so so it's a it's almost like a funny story is that when i when i was building out the space here i don't know if you've seen uh montana riding the boat but uh it's kind of like stuff like this is is what really makes me happy about doing the stuff in minecraft so montana is a dog uh, a real life dog um owned by one of the people I like on Twitch, um, his name is King of Apoc. So he was, um, he kind of, he's like one of the kind of, um, he's one of the more skilled, uh, video game players that I, I, uh, watch on, on Twitch so when i when i talked to him recently i was like hey i'm adding so you want me to add montana into into my map and so he was like yeah sure that sounds good um but when there was a little bit of change up in account so um i have my my uh, character here that has the you know has the has the avatar so oops i need to fix that so I have, you know, I have the avatar with the smile as kind of like a way to remind myself not to be me a perfectionist. So when I change the account over to me, I couldn't move him around at all. So like you, you click on the, you click on like a cat and then they can move around. Like Yuki is now moving around, which can be dangerous for them. So I like to make sure they sit. But since Montana, I couldn't move him around. A buddy of mine was helping me figure that out, and part of that was uh, putting them into boats and walk, you know, moving the boat around. So, in a sense, it's like you know, he kind of was in a boat, and I was like, oh, he'll he'll hang out in a boat. The real life Montana would be fine with hanging out in a boat, and. You'd said, uh, I know it's challenging. I like perfection. I like the pun there. But now I'm sometimes meh. Uh, I like the, uh, I liked realizing, as soon as I realized there's like, um, what is it? There there are quotes, like, like a whole bunch of them, like um, perfection is the enemy of good or the enemy of done. And there's like, there's good enough uh, kind of a thing. I like the good enough approach. Um, so Montana, he kind of just got stuck. He wasn't able to move around. And so we were able to lure him. Uh, I have a buddy of mine that helps with the law, like the, the bigger scope planning. But um, Montana got stuck. He, I couldn't move him around basically. And so we got him in the boat. We we kind of pushed him in, so he wasn't really chasing after the cats. But uh, um, it was kind of a funny thing. So I liked that having him in the boat. And you said, "Have I heard of the Japanese idea of perfection? Do you mean like uh, kintsugi, uh, or do you mean uh, something else there?" So I just like having these cats around. They kind of, it's like uh, when people stop by, like like Mr. Menu, um, it's like, hey, can I add my cat in? So uh, that's not Mr. Menu. Mr. Menu is, Mino is over here. So I like the idea of, um, you know, people stop in and it's like, you've you've shared your time with me you've shared your your bandwidth so it's like hey let me do stuff to to honor that including let me add in if you want me to add your your pets in you know a fictional pet it's all good and so you say the japanese idea of perfection is that the japanese mindset always strives to reach perfection but it's impossible to achieve absolute perfection yeah i i definitely understand that where it's like we think like oh here's you know as an example here's a block uh, and i'll do this to 
showcase that a little better. So here is a block in Minecraft that is one meter by one meter by one meter. So that theoretically should be a perfect unit of measurement. But it's it, it's like what truly is perfect in life. There, There's mistakes that happen all the time. And so we should be, rather than chasing after the perfection, we should just say, eh, it's good enough. And so that's not being callous, it's just saying, there's no need to be chasing after everything. Just do what you need to do. I'm going to get some water here. And then by me uh, accepting that I'm not perfect and, you know, as someone that makes mistakes, I can then go in and I can then build these things where the scale is really weird. If I gave this to an architect and I said, hey, you know, here's what I'm building, they, they'd kind of laugh at me. They'd be like, well, this is a really weird scale, but I don't need that. What I need is I need to be able to tell stories where, you know, a, a character of, an, of a novel will sit here and be interviewed by, by me, the in-universe version of me, and we talk about, you know, how how were the events of the the novella or the novel? Did you feel uncomfortable at all? And then she could say, uh, it was all good and all fine. And so that way we, you know, we can make sure that things are clear. And uh, I've added in Sir Finn's as a background character. And then you say, here, a hydrate. Yeah, I need to need to grab a little bit of water here <clears throat> and so then uh, I asked Sir Fins as well I said hey uh, uh, you know he's, he's been a, a very big advocate of, of my of what I do this kind of weird weird thing I'm doing on Twitch where it's like I'm I'm using Twitch, I'm using Minecraft to tell stories. That's really kind of, it's it's a new idea, but he really has has uh, been a very positive person and in, in, in helping me out. So I'm like, hey, I have space for you. Do you want to be a background character? And he's like, yeah, sure. That sounds great. I appreciate that. And so... You said I started drinking water with lemon juice and frozen strawberries. That's a that's a good combination right there. I I tend to drink more of just water. Um, that's a, how I phrase it. Just a plain, maybe slightly fro you know chilled in the refrigerator. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think mixing up a little bit is good too. So in this area here, um, this is like the, the, so the discord that you're currently in, Sinja, um, what I did, what I've been doing recently is I've, I added in the, the website address for that discord. And what I can do here too is I can go ahead and add in discord. And so I have, I've been kind of planning on like, you know, like it's a, uh, this would be like the general hangout spot, so to speak. So like anyone, like, like say like if you're like, uh, I'm not really too interested in, in reading your literature, but I think you're a cool person. So, it, you know, like I have like stuff like I want to do like a watching loop on the third or like talking about anime or like talking about fitness stuff. And so I want to have uh, building this area out is just more for fun of of building out various little recreations of the room, the channels I have on Discord. And then here's more of like the serious, the writer's room, if you will, where it's like, here's where, and then here's where my desk would be. So I, I like to think of it as if I'm here, then I'm no better than anyone else. Because if I if I say like had a big desk that's like 
this big honking desk off to the side and everyone's kind of like looking at me kind of sideways glance then it's it's less of a collaboration and though i'm the primary writer um i have long-term plans where it's like i would want to have um a publishing business to have have my my have things um legally protected so when i publish stuff it's like um i don't publish something and have it stolen from me or have it, it you know like we were talking before about um revealing information that could be um could be sensitive information so it's like making sure that when i write about the more you know my experiences with the american healthcare system that it's like these are all, in a sense, legally binding documents that convey my experiences truthfully, um, and there's no lying to it. it. It requires a lot of lot of moving parts, and so when I when I have the mental focus for it, I like to put time into the like writing the the fiction, like planning the fiction or building the business stuff. And all that just takes time and, and effort. So that's where all this goes. So when I was talking earlier about how my mind um, compartmentalizes things. So when I, when I feel bad, when I'm not feeling in a good mental space, I can't really work around here. It doesn't really make sense to be here when, I'm, when my mind is down in the dumps. So... Let's see, I wanted to add in here. Yeah, that'll be good, maybe. Because it's like, you know, you have to kind of know your, know yourself, know your space, know your mindset kind of a thing. And so that's where, as I'm building this out, I'm realizing, hey, I know when I feel good and when I don't. And so when I don't feel well, then there's no point in me building it over here. But when I do feel good, then I can go add stuff. Like I can, I can say add in. So as part of the novella, let's see if this will work. I think this will be fine. Let's go, oops. So when I go write the novella, there will be a part where uh, the main character Sam Ohini, um, kind of like as a as a almost like a little casual joke, I, I might say, but like she'll we'll be walking along and they'll be like, oh yeah, let's go back here. I'll show you where where I'm writing, you know, your your novel kind of a thing. And then it's like we go over here, and then I'll be like, oh yeah, so here are all the people that are helping me out. You know, we're all part of a big team. We're all friends. And then it's like, you know, here's where my desk is. I'm not I'm not super cool or anything. I, I just have a regular desk like everyone else. And so by keeping that sense of, um, I would not say self-deprecation. I wouldn't say like um, trying to be belittle myself, but just saying honestly, like, I am, I'm just some dude then that's my way of keeping myself honest and held accountable rather than, you know, being the, the, having the big writing desk and being like the boss because I'm just some dude at the end of the day. And so having this sort of reflects that in a way where I can say, you know, I can, I can say soul Shavalsky reading desk or something like that and then like we can kind of kind of roll with it because in uh soul's avatar is like this mothman character and i think if i write it well enough then i think i could write it where it's like you seriously see a mothman character and it's not not all that weird it's just more like okay that's that's what's going on so let's see here Part of what I wanted to do when I was building out this area, I was deciding how I wanted these. These would be like laptops. 
And so I don't know how that will look yet, but part of it is I want to have like a make it kind of clear that like here I am, here's the representation of me. Let's see if there's like a sign. And then let's see how this looks. So we might have to go like this. So it's it just kind of fun things I do to kind of, if I will, um, there's the idea of like iteration on ideas where you have, um, here is an idea that I think of yesterday and then let me go add to that today. I think that might work. But then it's a matter of building out these laptops. So let's see. Let's see what kind of things we can do for that. There are slabs. And this is like the, the kind of fun thing, if you will, about Minecraft, where it's like there are all these creative problems and you have to come up with solutions. So sometimes it means doing weird stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, let's go ahead and have you sit down so you're not, not in the way too much. So it's just kind of fun stuff. Like the, this is where if I'm feeling better, like like uh, when I started two hours ago, I wasn't really feeling it too much. My my mind space was in a in in the metaphorical and literal sewers. And so then through working there, through talking about my my problems, my woes, um, in a way where I didn't I didn't want to like heavily advertise what I was working on so I didn't burden people, then, it, you know, it was a way for me to, to overcome that. And you might like the Sinja. So I have, I have this emote. Let me bring it up. Uh, a friend of 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 Sir Finn's and, and mine, Dr. Orochi, has this emote of Garfield. And so it's like, um, it's almost like the uh, uh, more, you know, like the Mondays kind of a thing. So actually, now that we're thinking about it, before I forget, because... I can can make I can make a Garfield essentially. I can uh depending on how many cats I it takes, I'll just have more open slots for other cats. So Okay, you're you're sitting, so this is like a gray cat. Minecraft notes. Uh, you you asked if I have any animal companions. Uh, currently, no. Um, I when I was growing up, I had a, a pet. Um, I had a German Shepherd Collie or German Shepherd Golden Retriever mix. Uh, his name was Patrick, and he was uh, he was the the he was a really great dog. He was just a fantastic um, all around, just like the the best the best dog that one could ever ask for. And so he, uh, when I think of dogs and I think of pets, I always think of little, little Patrick. And I always think of, uh, how good of a dog he was. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm just generating some more cats. So then that way I can, uh, I can get a Garfield, uh, is what I'm planning. So we have a, tabby cat I think and then I figure you know like like I was saying before um, I I like the idea of you know like with with Patrick there um, I I want to add him into a special spot because he's a he's a special dog for me he's a special um, you know his uh, his 
he he represents something very pure and very um very good in this world to me so i want to honor that in a very specific sort of way i haven't really planned out too much yet but what i want to do is i want to and there's our garfields um i want to have like a little area where it's like you know here's patrick's spot and so i just haven't really figured it that out yet and so that's why having having these these bunches of cats it's really nice to have, you know, just hear all these, uh, hear all these cats because I know exactly the, I know, you know, having, having pets there, they just make you feel better. Our fields, having them around is that it's like, yeah, you know, I can, I can go in, I can, it's like, uh, and thank you for that. Uh, yeah, when the when I know the time is right, I'll figure it out. But uh, it's like, uh, have you heard of the uh, the Twitter account? Uh, can you pet the dog? It's this uh, Twitter profile where it's like, uh, you know, the the basically the the person that ran runs the Twitter account. Uh, I read. Uh, I read an interview with him on what he was planning uh, when he built the Twitter account. So let me let me go link it to you in the chat here. So you pet the dog. It's uh, it's this guy that just one day was just like, I wonder if you can pet the dog. And so then what he what he's done is he's he's um, copy that. He's made how many tweets are there? Uh, it doesn't show me how many tweets he's made, but it's essentially this account where let's go back into here, where um, he just goes into all the video games that he finds and asks the simple question of, "Was there? Uh, can you pet the dog?" And so. It's a really interesting idea where it's it's like first to just start off as him just kind of getting screenshots and seeing what's what's out there, and then yeah, sure thing. Uh, what it eventually turned into is this almost like a, like I would say like game developers caught wind of this, uh, not to use a pun, uh, but they they found out that here was this this dude that was posting tweets every day or every week about can people pet these dogs and you know like not every uh, like these these game developers they have pets they love dogs and so they they kind of leaned into it and they said well what if we made it so that you know we you could pet the dog and so it was just this really fantastic thing where it was just like this dude was just like one day just you know what if what if they could you know what if we could catalog if he can pet the dog or not and now it's this whole almost like a, a cultural movement within video game developers where it it's it's a moment of pride where it's like you can pet the dog and then there's like you'll see tweets where they show uh clips of um dogs being pet and you when you watch these animations it's like i see them myself when i when i see like i have pictures of my my dog patrick and when i think about he he passed away we had to put him down for for spine issues and in, in 2005 uh, i believe it was 2005 so you know get 16 years he's been gone but i still remember petting him on the head and i still remember how he really enjoyed that and so those sorts of things, those moments, you know, I keep them. I, I cherish them. They're they're moments that I, when I when I think of of what I do in life, it's like I wanna I wanna honor that, and I wanna be be like uh, there's like the the quote of uh, be the person your dog thinks you are, and so it's a kind of way to to remind myself that. You know, yeah, we all have bad days. We're all, it's all possible that we can uh, act in ways that are, are, 
you know, at times non, uh, how would I, how would I phrase it? Like off brand. So like there, there are times when you might just be having a bad day and just be mad, but it's like, if, if your dog can still love you at the end of the day or your cat or your, your pet, then you're doing all right. You're not doing too bad. And so that's where I think of as long as, as long as you're acting in a way that's, that's good and proper, then, you know, it, it's like you're, the world is your oyster of, of sorts. So you can, you can do, do anything as long as you're acting in a way where at the end of the day, your pet will still love you for, if they knew, if they knew what you're doing, it was like, if, if so if patrick were uh were like if i were to tell patrick you know hey i'm i'm writing all this this down because what i want to do is i want to help the american healthcare system and i want to make sure that you know we there aren't situations where people feel the way i did and he'd probably be like oh that's really cool but can i have a treat <laughs> and so yeah like you say like worthy of unconditional love it it's like pets are really great in that way because they are, they're honest and true. There's no deception. There's no lying. Uh, they're, they, it's like they almost, they can't because they're like, uh Oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get in trouble. If I, if I do this, um, I think it was a slab. And so it's, it's great. It's like, you know, having, having pets around, having dogs, is really a good way to remind remind ourselves that you know we can we can be a, we can chase after perfection as much as we want we can be these sorts of people that want to um, you know be be good and decent people but at the end of the day if if we don't act in that way because like our our dogs know that we're not acting well then are we really acting good and you say pet relationships are genuine and real and I agree with that I I, I genuinely do where uh, you know the pets know if you're acting good or or bad and they know they're like oh you know you're a good person you're or you're not a good person I like the carpet more so I think what I've essentially done here is I've kind of pretend it made like a, a writing de two writing desks where people would go to write or to read. And I think I've conveyed that well enough. So let's see though. Yeah, I can't add anything there, but I can do this. I can have a screenshot there. So, yeah, like uh, kind of, kind of the fun, fun story behind Zeely here was. Uh, um, so her name is based on Zeal, the the whole area here, and so when I was starting the builds, um, my buddy, my buddy showed me a map that he was working on where he. He had he had these. Uh, he was like, you know, do whatever you want. It's kind of like a creative, creative area where you can just kind of do what you want. And so I found out about making wolf, um, you know, having wolves around. And so I was like, oh, that's really cool. And so then I spawned these wolves, and then I realized, well, I want a I want a wolf in in my map. I want to have an you know a, a pet here too. I like dogs. And so then I had, uh, I spawned one and I was like, oh, that's Zeely. And then from there it was like, oh, Zeely is like the, uh, the representation of, you know, being a good dog. And so I really enjoy when that little animation goes off and you see the, the flower, the, the hearts. Like with this right here where it's like. Oh, and now they're, I guess we've, uh, we have a new pet here, so, um, that was a PG-13 moment, I guess, but, uh, 
Let's uh <laughs> Yeah, you um let's see. Come on. That was a fun little moment there that uh, I just recorded by accident. So I guess Zeely's hanging out in the boat now. Then we have this this little puppy. Yeah, that uh, that was a little uh, a little odd to have happened. Uh, I I didn't expect that to happen. I don't know why the the wolf isn't moving. Um, I wonder. Uh, okay. Um, I accept it as it is. That happened. So let's. Um, <laughs> isn't it fun when it just like a game just kind of throws a little curveball at you and just says, "Hey, here's here's something that'll happen." And it's like, oh, okay. So. Yeah, um, what I was going to work on here next was I wanted to expand out this this hallway area because what I was thinking was I wanted to have the hallway a little bigger. So it, it's also too a, a matter of when I do these Minecraft um, things is like how how long do I want to go? How much do I want to go into detail on stuff and you had said curveballs are sometimes fun and cool. Yeah, that was definitely one of those uh, uh, unique experiences, I will say, that I was like, oh, okay, that that happened, that, that's fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's one of those, like, I kind of, oh, so kind of like what, I, what I'm liking about, about doing this project online on stream is that, it come across situations where things where things just kind of happen they're just kind of like um it just kind of randomly all of a sudden something like that happens it's like oh okay i guess that's that's what happened then that's cool you said uh, you should add the wolf and dog to your description or tags uh do you mean like having i don't quite know what you mean there sinja about adding the tag on there um, but uh, if it's something I can add I'll see about adding it um, I just don't know offhand what you mean so if you don't mind clarifying because I can I can like add a name tag on there I think that I think the wolves are just kind of kind of stuck there at the moment oh you mean like adding in that little uh uh, yeah, so, like, when I upload my videos onto YouTube, I have a VOD channel where I upload all my, my YouTube stuff. Yeah, like, I don't know what I call it, um, because it's, like, like, kind of, like, what I do when I title the, uh, the videos is I talk about, like, summarize it. I use three words to, I use, like, a three-word kind of style to avoid doing like clickbait and so it'd be like you know like for uh for talking about you know the healthcare stuff like i did today like that was the primary focus so it'd be something probably more related to that um let's see so it's one two three four five six seven eight let's let's do ten that feels good so i could clip it there too i mean if you if you feel like you want to clip it or i could clip it later um the clips are kind of like like things that um they're used for twitch when people do shout outs so it's one of those like um like i have one clip where it's like i accidentally flooded a uh flooded the uh convenience store of the apartment complex is like oh i've done this 
So it just kind of fun stuff like that. So yeah, I should uh, I should plan to clip that. Let me make a note. Clip the. It, it's almost kind of funny though. Like if I were to clip it, would I have to put like a, you know, like a <laughs> a, a tag on that of like oh. Um, is this a, you know, like not, not really, but like, is this kind of mature content? <laughs> and it was just, it was a really kind of fun, exp uh, almost if you will, like an experience of just having it just happen right, right then and there. Like I didn't realize, oh yeah, like a warning, uh, maybe, I mean, that's where I'm thinking. I'm like, I don't know. And you say nah, so. It, it might just be like, uh, I don't know, but the best way to phrase it, just be like, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm open to, I'm think, I'm thinking about if I want to do that because, you know, clipping all that, because it's a funny idea and it definitely clips do help, help promote aspects of the channel. And so, um, it's kind of a cute thing. So, uh, Sinja, do you want do you want to give a name to the wolf puppy? Because it's something where it's like you know I didn't really anticipate it to happen. Oh yeah, see my new wolf slash dog hybrid pup. I can uh, I can roll with that. It's almost like uh, like what I like to do when I clip people's stuff is I like to use use the language that they used when they they did the when they were in the the scene. So okay, yeah, no worries. I I was just thinking like if you wanted to name the puppy, uh, you know, anything based on like a real dog or like a fake dog, uh, fake is in like a a fictional dog then uh, I'd let you have it because it's like you know kind of like like I was saying before of having having these um, having having uh, you know they're they're not the real pets they're just like uh, they're they're an avatar but we can imbue the properties of them being real and so by doing so, it, it, it helps with the empathy side of things. Yeah, I can I can name, um, would Loki be male, female, or other? Um, I put like a, uh, a brace quote, I put in, if, if it's like a gender unknown or gender, you know, inclusive situation, and I, I put in a tag like that, so. It's like kind of my way of, of doing my doing my little parts here and there to to say that I I appreciate people for however they are whoever they are if they if someone uses a they pronoun then I'm hundred percent cool with with giving them respect by giving them a they pronoun um, in in my language when I reference them. Yeah, exactly, uh, Sinja, like a gender neutral, non-binary, or like my joke is like, um, if it's not medically important, I don't, I don't ask questions of the dog or the cat. So, you know, if it's like, yeah, there, you know, there's, there's no health reason to know of the, uh, the, if you will, like the, the sex of the, the animal, then it's just like whatever. It's just like a what, uh, like a a question mark is is what I tried to use as an inclusive symbol to say um, we don't know, but we still love the pet anyways. And so that's kind of like my. Yeah, I'm sure there are better shorthand um, phrases for it, but that's to use one symbol. That that's what I used, and that seemed okay at the moment. So, yeah, I could I can give Loki a, a the gender neutral or non-binary um, like that's why that's why I kind of mean there. So, 
Um, that's what I'll give for the the name tag there. So we'll go name tag. Then we'll do this. Loki. And then something like that. So that way it's like, yeah, you know, they're the, they're the dog um, that just how oh here Loki has grown up into a a a a full full dog by now so let's see and then as far as getting them to move but yeah Loki did grow up fast. I imagine too that if we would have just waited around, then it would have just been a situation where it, it would have been uh, trying to move the boat along. So it, it's like if we would have waited around, it just would have been all of a sudden just popping, and the little puppy would have grown up into a into a full full dog. So what I'll need to do here is I need to destroy the boat so I can move them around a little bit. So the boat and it's a dark oak oak boat. So what I do very carefully is I do one of these. So it's a I'm silent here so that way I can concentrate and know that I'm doing it correctly. Because see, I just hurt Zeely there. And so I have to be careful about... She's okay with one... One little click. Let's go ahead and do that. But then multiple can be a bad situation. So let's see. like that. So the idea would be like I, I need to destroy the boat to move the the wolves around. And I think I'm doing it correctly. See I've done it again. And this is the sort of thing too the I don't like I don't like this to a certain degree because, you know, I, I, I appreciate Zeely as a, a, not just an AI. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I'll, because I can change it here to creative. We can give Zeely, and then let's do this. Let's see. Oh, we have another dog. <laughs> see, this is kind of what I want to make sure to avoid, is that. Otherwise, we have we have uh, a, essentially a way to have a many many um, more dogs. So let's see now that I'm in a different mode if I can go ahead and do this. So this is kind of a fun, like, you know, if I would have, if I ever started this Minecraft session and said like, oh yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing today. I wouldn't have known that. So let's see. If I do this. Okay. That's what I wanted. I wanted, uh, and there are good dogs all around. But let's get them moved over a little bit. So, come on. <laughs> so, Loki, let's go ahead and get you. 
I think so there was this problem before that uh, that some of the dogs I could not move them I mentioned it a little bit earlier and it was because uh, their owner t changed so I'm wondering if that's what's going on here too so I can't give you I wonder if I can give you a bone so it's a it's kind of a weird thing and, and it's like there's a solution for it but I want to see what I can do it's a leash oh a lead so I want to see if I can move them so whereas here I wonder Okay, so I can I can walk the dog. Let's get you seated though. So with these, yeah, it's a it, the the short answer is it's a complicated thing. Um, but let's see. Okay, so Montana's in the boat again, and I don't know, I can't feed this one here. Should I name the other one Thor, or should I give, give this one a, a different name? Oh, and that's how the, that's how the dogs um, grow from puppies to adults. That was kind of a, that was a nice, fun little Easter egg. Uh, I'm thinking Thor. And we'll also do the same uh, non-binary, just so that way we can, like I say, celebrate, celebrate the, uh, how people in life uh, may have different um, perspectives than what we have, to phrase it one way. So we'll say Thor. And so if we, if we say, see someone that's different than ourselves and say, that's cool, I honor that, I respect that, I think that's a good way to go. So we have Loki and then we have Thor. So yeah, that, in a sense, it's, a, it's almost like a philosophical sort of thought process of how do I want to live my life? And part of that is, I want to respect people for how they are, however they are. And you say groovy and I agree. It's it's something like, uh, I, I do this bit like, you, you know, you've seen, you've seen the TV show House where, where House says, uh, um, how does the phrase go? He says, uh, to quote the philosopher Jagger, you can't always get what you want. And so, to quote the philosopher Cobain, come as you are. And I think that's a really valuable thing. Like Nirvana is my favorite band. And in, in part, it's because of stuff like that, where they're very much a band that was like, you know, we, we don't want people that are prejudiced or in other ways harmful and rude to others at our shows. And it was very much, a, you know, like you, you think of people as perfection, per, uh, people that are perfect, and you think like, oh, you know, Kurt Cobain was always going to be like that. What happens if he had a bad day kind of a thing? And it's like, if he did, hey, it's fine. Yeah, good philosophies, right? Nirvana's Come As You Are is something uh, I went to, I went to Hawaii back in 2007, I think it was. It was it was a good long time ago uh, in a galaxy far far away if you, if you will because like that was a whole long time ago but I went to Hawaii and that was the first time uh, like I grew up in in a situation where like I was was overweight 
I was bullied often. And so then having, having a space in Hawaii where, um, I felt comfortable for who I was as like this overweight kid. Um, I, I think there was even a sign there too in Hawaii, uh, that said, uh, come as you are. And I, I always, that always really stuck out to me as, as something that it, when I, you know, like I have this space here, I have this, this Twitch profile, I have, you know, twitch.tv slash zombie paper underscore that sort of, that sort of place. And I have the, the, the VODs channel where I upload stuff. It's, it should be a place where, you know, we're all, we're all similarly comfortable that, and part of that is if you feel like, like earlier I was expressing some, some sensitive thoughts, uh, sensitive sorts of like, it's easy to take things out of context when you're mad or when you're feeling bad. But if it's like, you know, you got to vent sometimes, then it's like, okay, like, you know, we, we want you just to be in a better headspace. And so that's the sort of community I want to build. And that's why, like I say, like having, 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 uh, pets that have, that are like non-binary have no, no assigned sex role, if you will, or I, I forget the exact, like the, the, like I, I took two, two classes in, in sex and gender in college. And unfortunately they were woefully, um, inadequate. They, they, they didn't talk about pronouns they didn't talk about nothing like that. So it was like, I had to learn pretty much all of this through online communication with others. And it was fantastic of like, Hey, that makes a lot of sense to me. If I want to be in a space where I'm comfortable it makes perfect sense to me where I'd be like, yeah, I should then be welcoming to others that, um, I don't know, I don't know things about them. And so the thing I think with gender from like a literary perspective and from a ling linguistic perspective is I think the intention is you say a gendered word, like you say, uh, like me for, for, for zombie paper, I use he, him pronouns. So if I were to say he, then someone were refer to me as he, then it's like a, a linguistic shortcut. So they don't have to refer to me all the time. But what happens is it kind of, it, it's, it's not, um, it, it's, it's complicated. It's kind of one of those, um, uh, the linguistics don't match up with the social sorts of thoughts where it's like we should be more opening and and polite with people but people tend not to be so i guess that's my thought on that is that yeah it's like twitch is a very inclusive place it's like as long as you're you're following the rules and as long as you're not actively being rude to people then come as you are and be who you are and there will be people that like you and accept you for who you are. And I find that to be fantastic. I find that to be just what helps me, why I want to broadcast out my, my weird story ideas and my weird builds. Because I could be doing this and, and all alone and I, I could be listening to music and Instead, it's like, ah, I want to share this. I want to, I want to build up a community of my own. And, you know, it's like, uh, like Sir Finn's is great because his community is one based on the notion of, you know, he wants to bring people up when they're having bad days or he wants to help them out. And that's something that, you know, I want to help out as I can too, that maybe there are times when, when, I'm not the one that's saying, Hey, I'm having a bad day, but maybe someone else is. And it's like, no, let's, let's stop what we're doing. Let's, let's see what we can do to help you out. Maybe we can't help out in direct ways, but if you want to just say what's going on, maybe we can give you an idea on what to do, or maybe you just want to kind of chill. Um, it's like with, 
with the whole mentality of lurkers like no i i understand exactly why people lurk it's because you know you 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 can't really contribute in a in a way whether it's um because like there's a deep conversation going on like like earlier with the talking about healthcare stuff if if you don't know anything about healthcare sometimes people don't want to contribute and i think that's good and fine like why would i want to force people to chat when they're not feeling like it and so that's that's where i'm thinking that um it, as i as i work on building this community based around me telling these stories i want to write um the idea would be you know if you're if you're not feeling well it's the sort of thing where you should feel comfortable whether it's here um in the in the live stream or maybe later on in the in the discord um you know have a have a safe place to talk about stuff and to like figure out perspectives on life and maybe it's like oh you know you have this weird situation that happened um but the the thing i've learned about like through my years of sobriety is it's like no one has had my exact experience but that doesn't mean i'm special that just means that i need to find people that have different experiences and so with those different experiences they they can teach me things about myself that can help me learn to cope with reality or cope with the difficult things and that's where i think that it's important for us to remember that although we're all a little different you know no one else has the username zombie paper underscore someone else has it with with the underscore but that person and myself are different people uh i'm different than you you're different than me but then that's a that's a good thing we should fundamentally appreciate that because um by you sharing your experiences with me today that helps me put my life a little bit into a different and better perspective um by me talking with you today it's it's in a sense it's made my my understanding of healthcare just a little bit better because i can understand a little bit more of why people acted the way they did and it's it's something more like yeah there's the negative perspective of yeah the the doctor just wanted to prevent being sued and it's like yeah i've i've every every right to feel angry about that and mad about it but like i say if i if i'm going at it from the approach of uh my anger should be used and yeah my throat's getting parched It's like to to use your anger in a good way that's that's where it should be or to quote the philosopher Zach de la Rocha of the band Rage Against the Machine your anger is a gift so that's that's in there one of those uh, little 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 jokes little little bits so let's see here Oh, I, I missed a spot there. Because when I was working on this before, um, I don't know, Asinja, if you do much with, like, art or anything like that, if you've if you've done, like, paintings or, or digital art or anything like that, um, when I've done art myself, it's like you, you get focused on one little aspect of it, but then you, you don't see the full of it. You don't see the entirety of it. And so then that's when I go zoom out a little bit and it's like, so, so from a, like I, I, I've done some art, but I wouldn't say I've done anything worthy of commissions, but like even something like this, it's, it, it's, it's aesthetically pleasing and there's some artistic merit to it. And then I have, you know, the, the torches, the, these would be like mirror, uh, windows, and then it's like this right here it, it 
it has a sort of symmetry to it. If you're a fan of art and music. Yeah, me too. I like the general, um, it's like things, things when they line up, there's like, there's a value to symmetry. Um, I also do appreciate when things are asymmetric, of course. So it's like, there, there are times and places for everything, but if, if I'm trying to build something like this, um, and I don't really know where, where it ends. So that's why I kind of have it, have it sticking like this. Um, but I do appreciate that you, you say you like the color scheme. I, I appreciate that. I, my idea is, um, you know, kind of green, lime green is like my, my primary color, if you will, like my, like I always tend to choose green, but then you always got to have like a, a, a player two, if you will, like a, in fighting games, like the player two skin. And so the player two color scheme I, I use is purple, uh, bleen. I'm not familiar with bleen. I'm going to look that up really quick. Philosophy. An object blue when first observed before a specific time or green when first observed after that time. Or if we consult urbandictionary.com, a number between six and seven. So I think I prefer that first definition, the bleen and the gru. Okay. Gru and Bleen are examples of logical predicates or mathematical statements coined by Nelson Goodman in Fact, Fiction, and Forecast. It looks like... Yeah, and then there's purine for purple and green and I don't know I, I wonder if I should link the urban dictionary one because it's always kind of funny but at the same time um, there are times when it can get a little raunchy so I'll quote the top definition of urbandictionary.com because it's kind of a funny, funny bit, as seen on the Nobel Prize in Mathematics was awarded to a California professor who has discovered a new number, the number is Bleen, which he claims belongs between six and seven. So you say bleen is your favorite color. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Oh, I can I can see that. It's like a I know it more as like a cyan color, like a Oh, and then we have uptime. I haven't set those up. Um here are the commands that I have. Commands. So there are certain bot commands where they have like, like you did the uptime or like the, the time um, of like, like my current time, it's uh, 646 PM is my current time. I'm, I'm in the Pacific time zone, but I have little fun things like uh, I have, I have why, why not? <laughs> It's kind of like little little funny things like that. So, yeah, it's like like um, language language isn't really quite a hundred percent. Like bleen doesn't quite equal teal, turquoise, or emeralds. Um, the, I like to think of it as like it's a when things are a close enough approximation that's usually okay. And that's like here where it's like, this is just kind of a um, 
an approximate space. Like, I don't know what to fill this all in with. Oh, and then as far as streaming, I, I've been streaming for two hours and 49 minutes. Um, so that's when I started streaming um, was at that point. And Mr. Menu, I'm probably pronouncing the name wrong. My French isn't really that great, but you said uh, Mr. Menu, Menu uh, needs some turkey slices. So if you need to, if you need to lurk, if you need to roll on out, that's perfectly cool with me. Let's see if they have turkey slices. They don't, but they do have cod. So I've given Mr. Menu menu a some uh, raw cod in in place of turkey slices so like I say if you got it if you got to roll on out that's perfectly cool I I 100% appreciate you stopping in hanging out giving me some perspective on things uh, that was really a, a I appreciate it um, in fact, because I appreciate it, let me add in another block here for you. Just so that way we can say that little bit. Because I added the one with the quote. But let's see what we say about bleen. There's no bleen, but we'll see if there's a teal. There's turquoise. Nope. So we do have emeralds. Um, but... You are saying bleen, which looks more like um, cyan to me. So we'll do we'll see about the cyan wool, and then that's light blue. So cyan wool, and then we'll say like this. Jan 11. <clears throat> so, Sinja what? <clears throat> Sorry about that. So let's see, uh, Sinja chatted with me about healthcare stuff. There. See, this sort of thing is like, like almost like a, a way for, for me to think about why I do this sort of thing, like why I spend this time doing this kind of stuff. Um, so like on the one hand, I look at, you know, I've I've uh, I've put in a fair amount of time doing all of this, but on the other hand, it's like it feels like nothing, nothing at all. It feels like a, a great use of my time, and it feels like something where it just it's very natural for me. I don't feel, um, you know, yeah, I, I am talking into a microphone, and so there's that sense of oddness to it but it doesn't feel bad it doesn't feel weird it just is like yeah i'm just talking to a microphone whatever and so you know part of that is is me doing stuff like this where i just kind of kind of uh you know it's very easy to to do the little commands to make shortcuts to make this easier but i just like there's a nice sort of meditation to doing these sorts of uh you know clearing out the space and, and making it look nice and especially it's like uh these are the times when i can just chat with people about stuff and you say intention yeah it's like like having having the the space and the time to say you know today um how would i phrase it it's like um you know, like say say you and I were just having a the same conversation, but outside of Minecraft. Um, oh, that's why that happened. Uh, that's fine. 
So, you know, we had this, like, let's say we just had this conversation on, on Twitch's legally distinct whisper, um, equivalent to like a direct message. And, you know, so I was just telling you about all this kind of stuff. It's very easy for, especially for, for me, once I realized this, like, like my perspective on life based on what I told you, it's very easy for us to forget about this kind of stuff and just say like, oh yeah, you know, life is just, life just kind of passes us by. But if we say, um, you know, like let's, let's cherish these times where you spent a little bit of your day, a little bit of your life sharing your experiences with me and the experience of seeing this floating tree branch it's it's kind of like the it's supposed to be a a tree but it's a potted plant so seeing it float in the air you know it's kind of a cool fun sort of creative thing it's like oh that's that's a little awkward let's take a screenshot of that and so having that is like you know rather than me just kind of bummed out about life and just you know weeping and crying so to speak it's like there's a place and time for that i'm not i'm not being rude or judgmental toward that and by no means would i would i say that it just if if you've done that sort of introspection and you've said okay i've i've done my sort of um you know weeping and moaning then i gotta get on with it a little bit i gotta i gotta do something about it and for me it's like I've I, I took care of a lot of the medical stuff today that I could have done. Yeah, wasn't that weird to have that little little tree plant just like hanging out? Um, I think I think what it was was let's recreate that. Let's see if my theory holds true. So, and then we have little potted plants there we go like this okay so um it 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 basically holds its place um even if it doesn't have anything underneath it so i can't have anything on on top of it like i can't i can't build there specifically until I get rid of it and then I can add it back in. And so that's why it was floating like that. But it was it was fun just to see it and just like, oh, it's floating, that's cool. And so Yeah, it's like, you know, I that's why I'm I'm really happy that I just was like, Yeah, you know, I'm feeling I'm feeling off brand, I'm feeling feeling down in the dumps, but let me just go out there and let me just broadcast myself out there and then it was like you're just like hey you know i i you know you you've stopped in before sinja you've been a, a a fan of the the content i make or at least of hanging out and so yeah i appreciate that you you uh you, you provided a medical perspective that was uh you know helpful for me to figure out like oh yeah like these doctors have been acting in this sort of way. I'm not just, you know, here I am just this crazy dude online that just doing this crazy stuff. It's like, no, nah, actually it's it's reasonable why they're acting this way. And they're doing it for this reason. Oh, okay, that makes sense then. And so what we're doing now is we're just aligning here and like this. So, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. It's, it's, I'm happy that I spent this three, nearly three hours, you know, building out some stuff and, and getting out my frustration. So that way, um, I don't know when I'm going to wrap this up. Um, but it's like, you know, when I do and we go raid someone, then it's like, it's, it makes it a little easier. I can then do other stuff and my mind isn't clouded with, with negativity per se and you said that you brush mr minow mr minu how do you pronounce your cat's name 
because I, I was like I was saying like um, I I studied a little bit of French in my middle school like in our like uh, what would that be like sixth grade sixth or seventh grade the the Bleen years six and seven um, we had like a four language class and so I just, part of that was like learning the basics of French and so if if M I N O U is French without looking at it too much um, it's like the O sound like the O but a little bit more of a O sound uh, I don't know that I can't really pronounce that too well my my kind of way of speaking is more of a I don't know how best to phrase it my I have a very particular sort of um, sort of like a American uh, sort of accent uh, people think I people think I'm Canadian sometimes because of my my sort of uh, half Midwest half uh, kind of kind of weird language uh, accent but you said uh, uh, you said the 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 phrase that starts with the C with the apostrophe that I'm I forget how to pronounce that too well uh, but you say monsieur mon, monsieur s yes. and then we have cats or chat <laughs> see this this is my uh my uh my sort of uh if you will the 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 positive aspect of like self-deprecating humor people tend to think of it like oh you don't want to be self-deprecating that's that's really rude to yourself but it's more like now nah, like I just don't take myself all that seriously all the time where it's like yeah I don't my my French pronunciation is terrible and I think it's kind of funny so I like sharing that that pronunciation with people I like in a sense uh, sharing that it seems like I you know like rightfully so that my my pronunciation is terrible and it's funny it's like yeah, here I am just like my my linguistic skills in French are, are not good. <laughs> and that's cool. That that that's funny. It's so I that's where I kind of kind of look at like language as something where um yeah, it's like when I when I joke about like my bad pronunciation, it's it's never like meant to be um toxic or, or negative it's more like just like um i'll give you an example actually uh this is a good one uh so i went to see the band guitar wolf and so let me let me give the wikipedia article here for guitar wolf so guitar wolf are a japanese band they're like uh like a noise punk rock band and so um i went to see them just randomly i was just like oh they're you know it's kind of cool um so i went to see them i was really impressed with them i was like wow this is these guys are fantastic they they do something really incredible so let's see thank you very much so what I wanted to say, and I'm just going to copy the the Romaji side of things. I wanted to say domo arigato gozaimasu ta. What I ended up saying was domo arigato gozaimasu. Yeah, it was basically, a, you said super, 
ultra polite thank you i i was my intention was to say thank you for your performance like i really i really enjoyed myself today but instead when i got to the last part i kind of just failed and i was like moo and it was like oh oops <laughs> but uh in that sort of way it was like me it, and like like I'll never forget this too because the dude you know he's like he's dressed up in uh in like a leather jacket like he's he's kind of looking like uh um I forget the exact word offhand uh, it's on the the wikipedia article there it's like a a style like a rockabilly style of uh dressing so I could just kind of tell that he looked at me and then he just is like kind of just was like oh this guy yeah so when i quoted um above it was like i had said domo oops let's see it and i'll copy the this one here so thank you very much in japanese translates out um you have like the arigato how would that be like thank you yeah like the the very much must be the domo part and so when I said you know I, I said that and I was just like I wanted to be not like a, a weird kind of person but I just wanted to honestly express you know here I am um, watching your performance and I I appreciate you but then when I said it I said it wrong and he just kind of looked at me and we both kind of laughed and it was just like, yeah, I, I screwed up, but he didn't, he didn't mind. He wasn't like judging me. It wasn't like a formal lesson. And so I, I really, really appreciate that, that it's like, you know, you can be self-deprecating without being negative toward yourself. And that's my example where it's like, yeah, I, I, I screwed up a word and talking to someone that I appreciate but he didn't care and if he did then I probably would have been like oh well that dude whatever you know I'm not gonna go go buy any of their merchandise or I'm not gonna tell this story from this perspective I'm gonna be like oh man this dude was a jerk but that's where I look at you know it's good to be self-deprecating it's good to keep in mind that you don't know everything because when you're when you're knowledgeable of yourself and you know your limitations like i i try to be my idea is that people will be less judgmental and they'll be more like oh, okay you, you don't know what you're doing that's cool and that's what i mean that's that's my intention is that yeah like i i don't know japanese but if i if i go and i practice a little bit eh, yeah, I think that should be cool. I think that should be fine. And so what I'm thinking here is we have the one hallway that's purple, that has the purple and the, the sort of like the carpet, if you will. I almost feel like I want to do that on the other side. And if I do, yeah, it's like the self-awareness to know that you know your your uh, what your intentions are, and my intentions were not like, let me go impress this dude with my knowledge of Japanese. It's more like, I appreciate your show, and I wanted to express that in a way that was very easy, in a sense, to convey. Where I could say, hey, you're Japanese. Let me let me thank you in in Japanese, so that way you could you could understand me because the the dude didn't really know japanese too well you know like he he understood it or sorry he knew english but like you know it's like he his english wasn't really the the best and so it was my idea of like let me thank you in in your language let me let me try to be polite and cognizant of of you and and let me let me say thank you in your language and i screwed up but it was cool. And he said, 
intrapersonal intelligence is the capacity to explore one's inner world and feelings. And yeah, I agree with that. Or you have you have the intra or the self and the the like the extra or the like the outside. What was it? The the inter Uh, so it's like the the whole the whole idea of like let me like here I am as a as an English speaker where I studied a little bit of Japanese and in, in middle school and high school um, because I like anime you know I'll just say it like that because I like I like watching watching anime and I like uh, I like the Japanese culture I like what it's all about um, you know there are bits of every language that every culture that have problems but I, I pick Japanese I like I like Japanese so you know here I was I was like okay let me give this a try and I screwed it all up but it wasn't a big deal and I thought that was really cool and that's something that that I, I carry those kind of thoughts with me those those sort of of sensations of like you know if you say the wrong word when you're talking to friends like whatever it's cool and he said, Japanese people are very polite and appreciate us trying to speak Japanese. Cho Sugoi. Let's see, I'm using Google Translate for this. A little awesome. Sugoi, yeah, I, I'm, it, it's like my, my understanding of Japanese is, uh, I can I can give a little bit of the details. Um, so like I when I studied in and I'll do that as I'm as I'm working on this bit here. So in in middle school we had the four language class of uh, it was Japanese, French, Spanish, and German. And so with that class. Um, I was able to learn a lot of the nuance and of language and appreciate that English isn't the only language, which really helped me understand reality better because then that way I could say, oh, there is, there's more out there to life than just me speaking in English. There's myriad of other languages out there and those are cool and valuable to understand, to know. Um, my linguistic skills, I would say, are best at the the psycholinguistics of knowing knowing how language shapes us. And so, in Japanese or in in high school, I I went with Japanese. I learned. Um, I can still um, with or my my language skills with Japanese are very poor at this point, but. Um, you know, we studied first year was like hiragana, katakana. Um, we we do a lot of practice stuff in robaji, and then second year was starting of kanji and and doing the more advanced things. Let me get some water here. And so, you know, here I was uh, uh, a student of of maybe uh i forget how old exactly i was maybe 15 16 years old somewhere around there and so me me having that sort of uh, you know age range i wasn't really the the best student um i like to say i'm like a b student of of literature and of uh of a lot of things in life and i don't mean that in a negative sense, but I mean it more in the positive sense of, um, you know, if you if you think you're an A plus student and you're like a hundred percent, well, that's an egotistical thing. But if you say, you know, I'm not I'm not an A plus student, but I'm uh, I'm acceptable enough, then I find that to be a good good sense of healthy ego. So. You know, like as a result through the years, I've learned certain words like sugoi is like awesome. Cho would be, um, I think I, I think I learned that in, in school, but 
but like Cho would be like small or little in certain contexts and so um, a little awesome yeah it make it that makes sense to me um, if uh, if you do speak Japanese uh, Sinja um, I can go ahead and re refer um, recommend give a shout out to uh, a buddy of mine that um, he does live translations of uh, let's do the shout out here first cracky reads he does live translations of um, Japanese video games um, he does it with a kind of cool um, like we we talk all the time about um, the how would you phrase it the sort of uh, the mindset of translating and so um, because I'm not, um, I don't have the technical prowess to learn languages only because I, my abilities with learning regard mainly this kind of space, you know, building out the space or figuring out the fiction stuff, the, the, the writing stuff is where I put my time and energy. So I can't, I can't learn a language only for that reason, uh, it's not like can't because I'm I'm incapable of doing so but with cracky uh, he uh, and like he he live streams uh, most days of the week he'll play video games and and what he'll do is he'll read a line of <clears throat> of Japanese it'll be like uh, say what would be like a detective game and so he'd he'd read off the line but instead of reading off in Japanese, he would interpret it and he'd put his own spin on it. So it wouldn't be, you know, here, here he'd say like, maybe the line would be like a little awesome. And so instead of saying, uh, cho, uh, instead of saying, uh, cho sugoi, he might say a little cool or a little awesome and in his way and reinterpret the line. And I think that's the the good way to go with with doing the translations uh, that he does. Where I've watched others, where what they'll do. <clears throat> um, here's another shout out as well. <clears throat> so let's see if action button was the right one. Uh, yeah, that's the right one. So Tim Rogers, by comparison, is uh, one of the things he does is he he plays games in Japanese and he uh, like he studied Japanese well enough to be a translator and that sort of thing. But he's he's done all sorts of cool things. He's one of my favorite writers. Um, but when he was playing a, a, a recently, he was playing a game. But what he was doing is he was reading off the the Japanese that was being spoken and doing a little summary and it wasn't really making sense to me so I couldn't follow along. And so it's almost like by comparison what what Cracky does is he he translates the the Japanese to to where like for me as a as someone of like a a novice in Japanese like I could never I could never s say a complete conversation in Japanese and I'm I'm okay with that um, yeah whereas both both cracky and Tim could um, but the difference is at least for the one stream that I saw with Tim Rogers where it was like here he was just like like saying the Japanese as well it's like oh wow you know you know Japanese but I can't follow along so uh, I recommend both of those channels to check out if you, if you, if you speak Japanese or if you're kind of interested in what I was talking about there. Uh, those are some of the fun things that I find on Twitch. That it's like more of the uh, kind of I would say like the the corners of the internet, like my own here, where I'm, I'm just doing this random wild kind of a thing. Um, but uh, other people do it to, you know, show off. Uh, cool weird games that can only be played in in Japanese and so 
Uh, yeah, that's like kind of um, because I've trailed off my thoughts on that. Let's see what else. Um, I guess I could think about how um, it's like when I when I was talking about language earlier and about how um, I've studied these languages as like a prerequisite for, for school, but I don't really have the interest in learning the language formally. Oh yeah, sure thing. Um, I'm glad that you, you were somewhat interested in, or maybe interested in checking out the recommendations. I thought you were a, a Japanese speaker, so that's where I was like, oh, let me let me throw you some recommendations your way. Uh, so sorry about that. Um, you say you know a few words, but you don't speak well by any means. So um, I think you may know a little more than me, and and that's where, like I say, like if if we're honest with ourselves, like you know, if we say like, here's where I'm at in my language studies when I go talk to like the dude from Guitar Wolf and I make that sort of, you know, like I say the wrong word. If I kind of show that, you know, here I am just like trying to express my, my sincere thanks for, you know, someone that has impressed on me a certain, uh, when I went to see the show, it was like, oh, this is a good work ethic that these guys have. I want to live more by that standard of not being super lazy, but more let me, um, there's a hole there, so let's fill that in. But if I, if I work hard, then I can achieve my goals, which is what I got from that uh, Guitar Wolf concert. And so, you know, it's stuff like that that I, I've, I want to celebrate. And so, when I had said that wrong, I was like, oh, <laughs> oops. But then, you know, fortunately, just like like when I was trying to pronounce the French words earlier, it was uh, it was kind of more, you know, the, the ego is health, healthy and in check. But at the same time, uh, I don't know how to speak French or Japanese fluently. And as long as I don't pretend to do so, then I think it's fine. I think it's kind of funny too. I enjoy the sort of uh, the the self-deprecation for the sense of having I don't know if you will like uh, you know like having a good time on life uh, on this planet Earth of ours. <clears throat> And so, yeah, it's like stuff like that, or like uh, I have I have many more examples of that, um, of me just kind of bumping around in life and kind of finding myself in fun, weird situations. Um, so I can share more of those if you're interested, or pretty much what I'm doing at this point is we're at about three and a half hours in, give or take. Um, I want to reach a good stopping point, and part of that is by me building out this, this area underneath. Um, what I'm doing is I'm working on like a hallway section, and maybe what I should do after I'm done with this. Yeah, let's go ahead and just fill out this section. Is I'll work on this bit here. I'll work on maybe filling in a few little gaps of the the kitchen. Then we'll go find someone to raid. So do you think I should raid Sir Finn's or do you have anyone else in mind that uh, I could go raid at their uh, Sinja? I'm open to suggestions to meeting new people and and finding myself in new communities of people on Twitch that are are doing their own kind of cool thing like, like what I'm doing here with this, uh, this sort of stream of consciousness um, analysis of my mind as I go build stuff for my, my fictional world stuff. Um, so let's see, I'm going to finish this bit here. There's a bit missing there. And 
Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the kitchen. How I want to set that up. And I should probably do this while I'm still here. Because on the one hand, it's like I want to use different colors. And so we have, okay, no suggestions on rating. Um, yeah, I saw, uh, I was watching Sir Finn's play, uh, that that Doom style game when I I believe I raided him yesterday I did and so I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I raided him again um, but it looked like a kind of cool like like almost like Minecraft uh, Minecraft and that it's like here's this uh, you know here's here's like the the voxel graphics the the blocky kind of looking graphics and but it was like a more of a, a first person shooter style game so that was kind of cool so yeah i figure we'll see i want to finish this segment off here and we'll do this and because i it's like on the one hand i would like to see sir Finn's. um he's been a great great moral kind of like a morale kind of booster for for what i'm doing here um but if i keep on raiding sir fins it's like ah hey there are more channels out there too so um let's see how this looks as i'm just about done you said la it was fun last night watching him play Phantomagoria, Ghost Hunter. Was he playing? That was the one where it's like the. Uh, there are like four people that are in like a, like a little trailer, and then it's like they go into the house, to investigate what's going on. Is that is that how I'm remembering the, uh, the Phantomagoria game? And let's see, we'll do white, concrete, or let's see, concrete. And actually too, Sinja, um, cause I'm kind of open for like what kind of colors to use. Um, do you think I should use like a yellow or like a, a, like kind of like a different color? This would be for like the one of the main colors for the the kitchen. Okay, yeah, that's the same game I was thinking of. It's kind of cool how he's got it set up. Uh, Sir Fins has it set up, so you know he can he can have people call in. Um, I haven't really watched too much of those, but uh, it's just because I don't really know anyone that's playing. So it's like just four strangers. Yeah, you, you said you watched a 30-minute game on YouTube. Yeah, I can I can kind of see... Um, and let's just go with white for right now. I can kind of see where if it's like... Oh, if you like green and purple, I would say... I would stay in the jewel tones. So... I have, I have like the Discord rooms, which are based on the... the uh, the Discord logo of blue, blue and white, and so it's like I'm not really too much of an ear interior designer um, yet. It's kind of one of those because of my my interest in architecture, I kind of have to be. Um, and we also have these are like a cyan uh, kind of color with cyan emeralds and lime yellow so it's kind of turned into uh um i would say like each room might have a different kind of color uh you say cobalt cobalt i believe that one's like kind of a I'm looking it up here. It's kind of like a, kind of like a cyan. Kind of. Like, there we go. 
images. Oh, gotcha. Jewel tones equals diamonds and jewelry. Yeah, the so with this, um, my idea with the carpet was like in with these restrooms, uh, kind of going back to the idea of um, we were talking about like um, gender inclusivity. Um, when I've been to restrooms, um, yeah, so I already used the cobalt slash blue. So I'm trying to think of another color scheme, like like if it's like yellow or, or something like that for like a kitchen is kind of what I'm thinking. But um, my idea with the restrooms is I've been to a few um, businesses where they have unisex um, bathrooms, restrooms, and I like that idea. I like the, the notion that um, there are people that, you know, it's like as long as you're not being weird and perverted, then you should be able to um, use whatever stall you want. Um, so with that sort of thought in, in mind, I was like, well, why don't we just have it as one big, you know, there's no like, there's no male or female or other um, bathroom. I just like, you know, as long as you're not, you're not creeping on anyone, like they're open for everyone. And then it, as such, there's a, no door to it. So you say purple slash gray, blue slash gray. I wonder, oh, I wanted to get that. So you say purple and, and gray. Let's dump the inventory. I've been thinking here too of adding in a how would I do that? Yeah, you said exactly. One goes in to do their business, and we're just doing the to the visual side of things. One goes in to do their business, washes their hands, and leaves. Which, in in my in my opinion, if we had more of that sort of um, almost like. A, trying to figure out how to phrase it if if we had the ability to treat people well uh oh so this is going to be the kitchen this will be like for cooking food um and like having as a sort of like uh you know, like as as kitchens do like the sort of uh um area for for making things to serve for for food or to keep for like a pantry for the rest of the area so um you had said purple and gray so let's see i want to see how this might look how does a purple kitchen sound does that sound kind of kind of like a little too too much or is that that sound so I'm just laying down some. <laughs> you you caught me there. If we have the ability, so what I mean by that is like, it it's weird because people. We all have the ability to be respectful. We all have the ability to to look at a situation and someone that acts different. Than ourselves. But then it, it takes a certain amount of empathy, whether learned or developed, or whether it's innate or learned, where we have to learn that, oh, wait, we should be polite toward people. That's kind of a good thing. And so then you say, uh, so a pa pantry or a kitchen should be bright and vibrant. I agree with that. So maybe purple and white for now. And like you say, we can always change. I can always change it up. But uh, let's see how this looks. And so yeah, like I say, like P 
people without going into politics or or the psychology of people it tends to be it tends to feel more like people are are willing to be exclusive and and be rude toward others than try to accept people for how they are and now i don't really understand why people do this uh it's like the notion of why people want to destroy more than create. Maybe it's easier. Maybe there's a, a sort of power that people have over others. Um, you know, these are the deep sort of philosophical meandries that philosophers spend lifetimes in out analyzing of why do we why do we feel the need to be harmful to others? For me, I just kind of look at it like. Okay, someone's different than me. Uh, I want to learn from them. And if they're being crappy to me, then uh, I, I don't have any need to learn from them. Um, I'll let them be crappy to someone else. And so let's see how this is looking. So at a glance, I'm, I'm kind of digging this. Um, the purple and the white kind of looks good together, so figure we'll uh i'll wrap it up maybe once i lay down these these floors and then i don't know i'm kind of wondering if i should mix it up a little bit too you say individuals whom are insecure tend to harm others to make themselves feel more powerful yeah, that that is the unfortunate truth, isn't it? Where it's like, if, if for for you know you and I, for example, we are good people, and that, you know, like, let's say I encounter someone that that is significantly different than myself, I would be like, wow, that here's someone that that is different than me. That's cool. I want to learn from them. Uh, I want, in a sense. Not too circusy, yeah. So what I'm thinking here is, um, I have the lines which definitely give off that sort of uh, bonkers, wild look. But then what I'm thinking is, I want to add in like this sort of look here, and so I'm kind of doing it like there's no real easy way to light down the lines, but I'm figuring if if I do this sort of tile. I can always mix it up later. I can always change the colors, but this is a way to kind of see how it looks. And it, it's it's like this is really enjoyable for for just doing this as a you know just having these sorts of chats while doing this. It's like compared to other games, this would be taking a long time to do, and so it's like then we can have these sorts of deep conversations on why do people act the way they do and i agree with you wholeheartedly where it's like people act the way they do because they're they're insecure they they want to yeah i'm thinking the checkerboard tiling and so it may look horrible but at least we're giving it a try at least we're experimenting and that's too i think a really good way to to look at life as if you're if you're willing to 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 experiment and try new things and make mistakes then you can learn a lot from people and from things in life you can uh you can say oh um you know like the example with the guitar wolf guy where i wanted to show my appreciation and respect for him but then i ended up um embarrassing myself but he was completely cool about it he was like oh you know he just he wants to be a, a a nice fan and so those sorts of things are are good examples of people acting good and so if we had more people like that more people that are are kind and patient with us as we make our mistakes in life then it just life is easier but then it's like, you know, why do we act the way we do? Or why do people act like 
that where they're so rude to others and it's like sometimes they don't even know that they're being rude sometimes it's like do we need to go train them to be polite and then there's a certain degree of wondering is that even my place I'm kind of liking how that looks that that seems to give off a good kind of like a kitchen vibe of that that sort of white um, tile a lot, I've seen a lot of kitchens with white not so much with purple but uh, I, I do like the purple it's a good sort of look so I think I'll I'll, I'll roll with this it's a good kind of scheme and so yeah it's just a matter of why people act the way they do and a lot of times I don't know you know if because I'm I'm sure I'm sure there are situations where people like are like oh that zombie paper guy he he sure was a jerk and so you know there are times too where I'm not the the paragon of perfection as 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 it might be like the this perfect person I'm I'm just some dude. I I deal with life and its many problems. I guess the only thing I I try to keep aware of is I'm not going to go down the street and go punch a dog. You know, I I may accidentally click on a Minecraft dog, but it's not on purpose. And Zeely didn't mind. I gave her a treat. She knew it was just me clicking wrong in the wrong spot, so you know, there's there's nothing nothing bad about it, but if I'm going in like taking doing a lot of kind of bad stuff, it's like eh, that's not so good. And you said social constructs and social norms. Yeah, it's like I wonder why people don't have more of those sorts of social constructs or norms baked into them where they they know like you know, it's not like religious values as a, as a only example, but it's like you have people where, you know, you, you study, you study the culture of a people that, that say like, you have to, you should be inclusive with others. You should treat people well. And then you meet some people and they don't act like that. It's like, what did you read the, the book that, that you should have read or you just, having a bad day and so there are people in life that it's like I, I think everyone to a certain extent has that space for having bad days and and acting and in, in ways that are out of character out of out of touch with who they are but it's a matter of it was their action something that was easy or was it something that was like easy as in easily forgivable or was it just something crazy gnarly that was super bad and I like that I like that kind of look I think I'm gonna roll with that for the rest of it and so oops let's see it's easier just to do the lines like I was doing and so yeah it's a you know questions of morality and whatnot are not things I can solve in a Minecraft video of me building some random kitchen stuff, but at least by asking the questions, at least by being cognizant of that, you know, maybe maybe you, Sinja, is the person that's been hanging out with me today in the chat, or maybe the people watching the VOD months or years later can, can start to think about stuff like, uh, you know, kind of tying it back to the beginning where it's like, I had I had that negative experience of calling up a calling up a healthcare provider and and you know saying like I need I need help with my spine I need help feeling better um, and then being told the earliest appointment we have is is in two months and it's like wow I don't know I don't know if my spine's going to be in okay shape in two months like it could be a lot worse. Um, and those kind of things put you in a negative thought pattern, the same as like people at work, you know, so for people that go into an office or work from home, 
you have a situation where you need to be you need to do a, a task or an activity but it's not really done well so it's quick to point the blame at people and say oh you know this person screwed up well maybe they screwed up because they didn't know how to do the job and so then you'd said there too Sinja you said uh, morals and conscience and it seems like it it seems easy to um I don't know. It's like I've I've met enough people over the years. I've I've thought about it enough where it's like they're they're the morals that are kind of like the the religious or cultural kind of morals to say act in certain ways. But it seems to me that those are mainly flexible that people can say I'm acting morally correct or I have I have my conscience in terms of how I'm going to treat people. And they can they can be true about that. They can say, you know, I honestly believe this. But then it doesn't really match up with the moral code that maybe they should have. So it's a way of hiding behind behavior, I think, is why people act in ways they do when it seems like societally they should not. I grab some more water there. I'm just about out. And I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up after I finish the tiling. Uh yeah, it's just something where you know when I when I think about these kind of questions and I think about why do people act the way they do it helps me when I write my fiction because it, it's a way for me to look at a situation and say, you know, okay, here is a really bad situation because, you know, a character acted in, in this terrible way. But if I can make them seem um, empathetic at all, then that adds in a, a new dynamic layer where I can say, um, you know, here is someone that's acting, acting foolish or acting crazy. Well, maybe it, maybe it's we need to learn to accept. Or maybe part of that is accepting people's weird behavior is just different than our own. And then you said, Sinja, when we grow up in a family, that's where a child learns morals, values, and conscience. Then school, church, and peers. Yeah, that's that's like um, they talk about uh, nature versus nurture. And then you said, unless one grows as an adult, goes to secondary school or travels. Um, and, and like in a sense, like you're saying like secondary school or travel. Um, I think that that class I took, that four language class I took in, in middle school, was really helpful in me seeing the world more as it is because we had to learn these four languages you know here I was uh, a kid uh, you know just learning English and then here I'm learning French and here I'm learning German this is you know kind of a, a crazy crazy thought and so um, the idea, though, is that it expands your mind out to then think about um, if you think of life in, in perfectionist terms of like, oh, I'm perfect or, uh, you know, I'm I'm above I, I'm above self-deprecation, which is why I practice self-deprecation as a way to check my ego. Um, it's a way to. If, if you're like, okay, I'm, you know, here is, here's English or here's German. Um, I can say with some reliability that English is not better than German and German is not better than French. And there's no good language. There's none of these languages are superior. Um, I know English fairly well, so that's the language I write in, but when I speak like uh, chaos, um, he's a uh, he's a moderator around here. He's a he's a buddy of mine that he just showed up one day, uh, saw what I was building, and he was like, "I wanna I wanna be part of this. This is something that I I like and appreciate." Chaos uh, is a is a German speaker, um, so his 
I believe, uh, yeah, you said English as a second language, French he's studying as a third language. So other than a few few um, phrasings, I would not know that he he did not speak English as a first language when when we'd write. And so that's an example where it's like. German isn't better than English, and English isn't better than German. But the thing is, is if you if you're growing up in in a in a tight knit community of people, there are pros and cons to that. The major con is you don't know people as they are in different cultures, and you don't know that people that speak English in a, in an accent that could be seen as a negative where for me um, a lot of my my earliest friends um, it throughout throughout school and then even now like especially today um, I would say more than half of my friends speak at least at least two languages you know I'm the, I'm the weird one that I only speak English fluently um, and I don't speak a second language fluently and so, you know, here, here are all these people. And so with all these people, they all speak uh, different languages. There's no language that's better than the other. And so there's no person that's better than the other. But as long as we respect that and we say, you know, German's cool. And it's cool for certain reasons, just as English is. I think that's the best way to go. And this is a really cool look. I really like how I, how I, built all that out um, the purple was a good good aesthetic choice there so I appreciate that Sinjo when you had suggested the purple and you'd said gray initially but we went with with white and I think that looks good so contributors Sinja minx So I do stuff like this too, like um, where I go in and, and for people that, that help out with stuff, it's like, you know, I could come up with all these crazy ideas myself, but I like I like crediting people when they come up with good 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 ideas to help out. So we do minx, Sinja underscore minx, and then we say kitchen tile uh kitchen yeah kitchen designs done and then i have to make sure i get that into my text pad my notepad document so we do like this guest book sinja minx Done. Let's see then. So we have our. <laughs> that was funny with, with all that, that little boat action going on there earlier. That was that was a little. Uh... <laughs> oh, come on, Zeely. Let's. I think uh I think Zeely's really in taking a latching a little uh little uh a liking to the the whole boat thing that's going on there because we have another we have another little puppy here. <laughs> Let's get you moved over a little bit more. Okay, there you go. <laughs> it definitely is a love boat, isn't it? So that is a very funny Oh, we should get we should get the little puppy over. <laughs> Mm 
that was just that was one of those like as soon as i realized what was happening i was like oh <laughs> yeah like, so it was really funny it was like uh i i was getting getting the getting the one dog the zeely i was getting her ready to leave and then i saw i saw just like a bunch of hearts going on here and in the love boat I was just like, oh, I see. So this this is a love boat. So let's let's see about moving. I want to move them out of the way a little bit, but they're also kind of stuck. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine then. So that was uh, that was good fun. That was uh, let's see about. Need to get the little wolf over. Where's the little wolf now? Where did you go? Damon's there. I have to keep track of these pups. They they have to keep them uh Yeah, here you are. <laughs> They're uh, they're a little wild and crazy, aren't they? But hey, that's that's part of the thing. Uh, I'm gonna get some water here. Where we we respect others for the differences because when we do, we can learn from them. And if they they end up on a love boat, then all we ask is that they be a little a little polite and a little kind of cognizant of what they're doing to avoid um, scenes that may be a little awkward for <clears throat> maybe for them and this little one here that's a little troublemaker I, would, I might jokingly say <clears throat> So let's see, I should probably wrap it up, but I also like to look at what all I need to do yet. So yeah, that's, I think that's gonna be a good good stopping point. What I, what I like to do here for the outros is I like to get a good kind of shot on what, what I made for changes. Um, so what I did was I worked on that little kitchen area. Yeah, that was something, wasn't that? Where they're still, you said, I cannot believe they're still breeding. Well, uh, that must be a, a little feature of Minecraft where they must, it must be like a little dynamic for uh, how, how they operate. Where I just like, you know, if there's a boat and there's two dogs, well, they're, they're going to breed. And I guess that's just something that we found out through this uh, this interaction today. Um, so I'm just kind of doing the little outro thumbnail. Um, I didn't do that last time and I was like, oh man, I should have a, a good shot for that. So that's just where I'm kind of going through. Oops, let's not do the double jump. Yeah, that looks good there, so I'll do the screenshot. And actually here, since, uh, you know, it's like I kind of make up the rules of, of what I add to the mural wall, since we had really good conversation there about morals as well. So, healthcare stuff. Let's add another one here. Let's say E concrete. Then we did the purple um, con purple concrete for the kitchen. So I'll do another one here for Gen is eleven conversation about morals oh 
there we go just a little uh kind of like what i like to do with that space is like yeah you spent time here today so you know you folks like um mind scan was cool and chat about stuff or like you know you were there mibs though so stuff like that it's you know it's like where how you spend your time is how you spend you know you you choose to spend your time here so that's cool so uh, i took that screenshot and i think we'll go raid sir fins again we'll we'll raid good good mr sir fins unless he is wrapping things up let's go ahead and I'll silence the tab and then I'll just take a quick look because other folks I have yeah I think that'll be a good option there so we'll mute we'll silence that I appreciate you stopping in here today Sinja and, and chatting with me at length uh, it was really a, a good conversation we had so I appreciate that uh, it looks like Sir Finns is still going, so let's go ahead. Yeah, it's a wall of appreciation. It definitely, definitely, that's a good way to put it. A wall of, you know, you've, you've spent your time here. Um, I appreciate that, and and the sort of, if you will, the sort of um, sincere, sort of way where you're not, you're not just saying it because, oh, uh, you want to look cool. Um, so. Yeah, let's go ahead and give Sir Fins a raid, and I wonder here too. So my viewer count's been one the whole time. Uh, I have a little little note of you know how how the view count goes. It's always been one. So let's see. That is super weird. But if we sh if we see it uh, as a stream as a as a rate of one, then we know it's going to be two. And so we'll go ahead and do that raid. And then we'll start the raid. And let's see how this goes. You say, no, that's not me. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll message you later, uh, and yeah, it's been fun. I appreciate you you hanging out as well. Um, I wonder. So before we go, uh, Sinja, do you see any kind of like raid message on your side? Does it say like uh, click away to not raid, or how does that look on your side? Because right now I just see the the one viewer raid, and I just kind of wonder. Because I'm like, you know, uh, it's it's a weird glitch I've seen now twice. So, I guess that's what I'm wondering is, do you see anything about it says like cancel raid or anything like that, or or stop the raid on your side? Is then what I'll do here too. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. You said you don't act you don't act cool in air quotes yeah i'm the i'm the same way where it's like you know i just i am who i am um but uh, uh let's go ahead and give him a raid i'll see what happens okay cool raid in progress let's see then stop 